It's the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> In a faraway land near St. John's lies the rugged seaport of Dildo, Newfoundland. Dildo, deeply penetrating the eastern coast of Canada, is known far and wide as the birthplace of legendary seaman Captain Dildo. <laughs> Captain Dildo is his name, the sailor we've all heard about in some exotic port. He's always pulling in and out, he's laid down a code to which he subscribes, spreading peace and love and giving us good vibes. Captain Dildo, Captain Dildo, Captain Dildo, Captain Dildo, yo ho! There's Captain Dildo heading out to sea. Gosh, I wish I was going with him. You will someday. And remember what they say. You can take a woman out of Dildo, but you can't take the Dildo out of a woman. <laughs> He sails the seven seas, a purple helmet on his head. He's legendary for the many tales that he has spread. Who needs a mortal man? Why become annoyed? Call on Captain Dildo, he will fill the void. Captain Dildo, Captain Dildo, Captain Dildo, Captain Dildo, yo! As long as Captain Dildo's around, there will always be a little dildo in all of us. <laughs> hey, it's Captain Dildo. You know what a dildo is, right? Everybody up to speed on that? Uh, coming up, we're going to have as our special guest, Dr. Sadie Allison. Oh. They call her Dr. Dildo. Uh, no, they don't. Oh. Uh, it's uh, She's from Tickle Kitty, and uh, she's the uh, supplier of, uh, what do they call them, uh, Marriage. Many happy, happy Marriage people. Marriage safe savers. <laughs> Adults, Marital uh, aids. Marital aids. Yes. And novelties. Uh, yeah. uh, in any event, uh, we'll be talking uh, toys. Uh, also, uh, coming up, Allie Breen with Sexy Time. That was the Bob and Tom Band and Orchestra though, with the classic <laughs> Captain Dildo. Thank you very much. Uh, what's going Good morning. On? Hi, there's Christy. Hi. Uh, Pat Godwin's here. Hey, Chick. Uh, Josh Arnold over there. Chick, it sounds like a morning of love. Uh, oh, it's, it's very be, much yeah. a morning of love. Yeah. Get ready for Valentine's and Day. Apparat high to help you uh, be loved. Uh, there's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm I'm Chick. Looking forward to that Super Bowl. Mm. Uh, four days away, five days. Uh, it's what, going up. Sunday. Yeah, it's coming up. Isn't here's, apparatus already the plural? Here's Tom. Uh, I do not Apparati? know. Apparati? I don't mm. know. Uh, Appara I know it's not apparatuses. Sus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, start off with a letter, hey. Uh, this, a, le uh, a letter, hey? Hey. Letter, hey. hey. He goes, uh, we were talking about uh, the Super Bowl and uh, the various uh, foods you should have. And somehow you suggested uh, making uh, meatloafs into bricks and uh, building a uh, sculpture out of meatloaf. Is that uh, correct? Is that what I said? Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. I, I said uh -huh. lots of stuff. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, th th this guy said, um, uh, every year my girlfriend makes meatloafs in the shape of footballs. They're about four inches long. That's a great idea. She uses ketchup to make the laces on yeah. top. Everyone has their own personal meatloaf. Cool. Christy, you talked about a meatloaf football yesterday. I did, and I got scoffed. People didn't even pay attention. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's cool. You know, They're there's really someone cute. Someone uh, the other day was talking about meatloaf footballs. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, was right. that you? Oh, I, I didn't pay attention. No, but, no, yeah, you, cool. you, you wanted to make them into bricks and build a... Like a meatloaf sculpture tower of some yeah. sort. There uh, didn't you say you made a real thick meatloaf once, but it was raw in the middle, and it was a, a seventy percent pink in the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you can't you can't eat raw. I think there's a limit to how thick you can have a meatloaf and have it cook evenly. There <laughs> is a look this up. There right. is a stadiums setting that is pop. It's going viral on the internet that it, it looks like a football field and then it goes up on the sides. It's like cardboard. But you put your carrots and your celery and your veggies and you present it, it's everywhere. Those are cool. Yeah. That sounds cool. Hostesses with the mostesses are making these for their Super Bowl party. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. fancy. And Remember when you take the crayon boxes and make them uh, sure. stadium seating? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Like that? yeah, like that. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, there, there you there, go. There it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's, uh, so you one. put the, the seats would have your veggies in it. Yeah, and the snacks are essentially the crowd. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fun. And the field's made out of uh, uh, guacamole. <laughs> really and you dunk yeah. it in the field. Mm. No, I like oh, that. that's a good that's idea. Soggy field. Out, but you can, yeah. Oh, well, you got to do it in the first hour or two before the field turns brown. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. What is it with guacamole and turning brown so fast? I know, but it's delicious. It sure <laughs> is. Uh, don't get me started. I, I love that guac. You know, oh. it turns out brown after you eat it, too. Thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, <laughs> sure you know, we found out yesterday the Super Bowl parties. I, I was quite surprised. Forty uh, percent of Americans claim they're attending a Super Bowl party. All right. I am. Forty percent. That seems high, but a lot of, it's a. And and no one in our little sphere here is right. I right. am. Christie's. I just said she's. Oh, you are. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know there was a woman here yesterday who was talking about up. footballs and was saying meatloaf footballs. I was over here. I was listening. I was over she here was trying going to find to a this Super Bowl story. party. I am going to a little Super Bowl party in our neighborhood. Yes. Well, Very then nice. you, what you, are you bringing? You don't care about the game then. What are you bringing? I'm not bringing anything because I'm coming in from out of town, so I okay. I got a pass. Oh, that's right. You yeah. have to travel. What a pain in the ass on Super Bowl Sunday to travel. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. You're in Florida, right? Man. Are you, well, is your man going to be? Uh, why why yes. would you do that? <laughs> oh, I'm just asking. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, well, um, that's awful. This is uh, the, Christy. You'll fit into this one. Fifteen percent of Americans plan to watch less than twenty percent of the actual game. That's true. I, I think that's will. low. I think a, a lot more people don't really watch the game. Mine, really? Mine's like a family part. There'll be a lot of kids and stuff. It's it's a real fun, it's a cute time. You know, TV's Do on, it. but people are not paying yeah. attention. I hesitate uh, to mention this because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but I'm so excited I'm beside myself. There's two of me sitting here. Really? Uh, the E-Trade baby, I think, is going oh. to be in a pickleball commercial. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Oh. He's some sort of pickleball <laughs> hustler. <laughs> he starts a fight on a pickleball yeah, court. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I now. can't wait. Okay. Um, let's see now, Josh. You're, I know you're, you're not even. Gonna, you're not going to watch it at all. Yeah, probably not. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, Pat, what are you going to do? Here? A little bit. Then I'll go to bed. Try to go to bed. Okay. And now, uh, Ace, she'll tape it. <laughs> Record it. Okay. Whatever. I, I, thank you for the he just wants cl clarification. Correct. If you would have said uh, record it, he would have said tape it. So good okay. luck. Okay. All right. Um, now, uh, my suggestion is uh, oh. if, if you don't want to watch the game, this is the perfect time to get a reservation at that restaurant that's always impossible yeah. to get into if it's open. Um, but uh, it, it's uh, fun. It'll be fun. And we have uh, some suggestions for your Super Bowl party and for your Valentine's Day uh, coming up down the road. Uh, Want to give me a little bit of a, a taste of what's coming up in the world of sports? Well, we're going to talk about uh, the Super Bowl. It's in Vegas, Tom, and we might not ever know who the winner is because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Uh, it's a lot to help somebody rats. Yeah. I'm going to say it's the Tangiers. Oh. <laughs> Tangiers is the casino from the Casino. Right? How are you doing? Hey, you all right. I think he went across the street. Oh, I'm over here now. Oh, you're over here. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about the Chiefs and the point spread, and why Why is it that way? And a couple of world records, and also uh, a reporter, I'm going to say, made history during the uh, the interviewing of the, the 49ers quarterback, Brock Purdy. We'll, uh, we'll hear the question that the reporter asked him. And uh, talk about being excited. <laughs> And I asked yesterday if you would ever get harassed by the defense going, you got a purdy mouth. Because his name but is I'm not, But I'm not, I'm not sure they'd even get the reference. I, I, how, many them, how many of the active players have seen the great movie Deliverance? <sighs> Maybe uh, not that many. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's happening. All these yeah. references are going over their heads. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, it's had, comedy, comedy gold. <laughs> uh, Christy, 55% of those surveyed said they're going to watch the halftime show. Whoa. And that is... Uh, I'll check that out because I like Usher. That often gets watched more than the game. Yeah. And isn't it a big deal, kind of like Saturday Night Live, they always have a special celebrity guest for this, the halftime show? Seems oh, like, like oh, a yeah. surprise? Yeah, I think, cameos you can, I think you can bet on it, actually. Oh. Oh. Like, remember, Dre showed up one year, isn't that right? Or Snoop was there. Or, well, he was scheduled, I guess. I can tell you, well, I can tell you who it's not going to be. <laughs> I'll give you a very long list. Well, <laughs> Anyone well. I'm interested in seeing would be the answer. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, coming up today. You don't have any Usher music at home? I wouldn't know Usher if he walked in here. Uh, 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 we have news from uh, Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. 
Commonwealth of Kentucky, an interesting story in science. We have a great breast implant story today. Yeah. Great. It's a good one. And then um, Mm -hmm. do you carry a wallet? Let's just do a little survey. Ace, you carry a wallet? Yes. Uh, Chick McGee. I, yes, but less and less on me. It's in the car. Yeah. Uh, Christy Lee? Yes. Joshy? It's uh, technically a billfold. Does that count? Uh, probably. Is, is a wallet different yeah, from a billfold? Mr. Godwin? The, uh, the wallet's in the car. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant a money clip. Oh, okay. Oh. That so is you, little... you keep a wallet in your car? In the car and a digital presence on myself, on my phone. Okay, well, we're all old then. We'll find out why. Oh, I could have told you that without asking. <laughs> we got, uh, wallets are out? Uh, apparently, yeah. Okay. We'll find out what that's all about. Uh, and that's that's coming up. Right now, I want to talk to you about a possible great gift for Valentine's Day. It's a perfect gift for Valentine's Day. Oh, the Raycon Day. earbuds or the Raycon headphones. I'm a big fan of both. Because you can buy a pair for your, uh, for your uh, significant other and then buy a pair for yourself. Because they're half the price of uh, quality audio... <laughs> uh, items that you'll find elsewhere. Uh, you know, like a beautiful love story, you'll fall in love with your Raycon earbuds. They're here for a good time and a long time with eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and you get amazing quality audio at about half the price of other premium audio brands. And of course, Raycons have awesome features like noise isolation and three customizable sound profiles. And you know, the Raycons have the optimized gel tips, the perfect in-ear fit. They fit every ear ever made. And we have love letters in this time of love from many, many listeners every day about their Raycons telling us all about them. Raycons Everyday Earbuds have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Want some love letter music? Yes. Dear Bob and Tom Show, I found myself in France. I was going to say. <laughs> I was putting a lock on the Bonjour. bridge. Is that a mandolin? Sounds like, yeah. Mandolin go to, and accordion. Yeah. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 15% off your Raycon order and tell someone, I love you. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. 15% off free shipping. Buy Raycon. And, 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 and here's my tip. Uh, get them for the kids if you're going on vacation. Uh, they put those headphones on, and suddenly they just drift off, and you don't have to hear them. Uh, Are we there yet? <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, Buyraycon.com slash Tom. Coming up, we have exciting news uh, from the world of wallets and uh, possibly the dumbest story in the history of music on the way. Huh. It's really dumb. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Morning. I'm Mark Allison. Thanks for tuning in to Bob and Tom. It does smell like barbecue sauce. There is barbecue sauce. Christy made us meatloaf. I'm terrified. Um, we're, We're celebrating Joe Day. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute! Now we're we're being uh, it's meatloaf day. Evidently interrupted oh. here. Uh, we have uh, Christie's meatloaf has just been brought into the room. Yeah. Bob. Bob's going to try when, some. When, of the when did you make this, Christie? Uh, two nights ago. Two uh, nights ago. Meatloaf is, is always day. best in the fridge. After, yeah. After, after a couple. Is there any are there any fillers days. in this? Any no, fillers? I have, what's your recipe? Can you share your uh, recipe? Yeah, I use uh, ground chuck, some barbecue sauce, a little bit of uh, Italian breadcrumbs, a couple. Is there of barbecue eggs. sauce on this? Mm-hmm. I wasn't listening. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> and it, then I... So uh, what's the verdict over there, Bob? I, well, it's barbecue meat, meatloaf. I put barbecue and, uh, and? syrup on the top. To I've never, is it I've good never, barbecued meatloaf? Or? Yeah, I've never had barbecue on my meatloaf before. Not and. bad? No, it's not bad at all. Hey, I don't thank like you. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, my kid damning with faint praise. I'm a, <laughs> I can't eat. I'm a meat intolerant. <laughs> oh, <I can't laughs> yeah. Seriously, my kids don't eat a lot of this seconds is, uh, in my house. And this they, is very good. This is a, a new it. twist to a meatloaf. Yeah, I've never had kind of a sweet what kind of barbecue sauce? Well, well, can we get this uh, food show all over the... Like we Sweet have Baby Ray? Or... Or... Let's, uh, can we celebrate Joe Day again, please? Let's do that. No, don't feed it, Tooby. Here. Eat it. Uh huh. <laughs> no, it's very good. Thank you. You need to dunk it in ketchup, though. That's the way I eat meatloaf. No, I don't use ketchup in my meatloaf. A hint of dog food. I, just a hint. <laughs> well, 
the church burned down and no one knew what Pentecost Baptist was going to do. The brimstone got so that gum hot it burned up a church bus in the parking lot. In a panic, the Reverend Dr. White called up an ex-member that hadn't lived right. He owned Joe's beer joint right across the fence. It's the same Joe's he preached against. He said, I don't really want to be a hypocrite. I got a Sunday school class about to have fits. We're all excited about revival week and been moved by the Spirit, so to speak. With all the souls we saved and money we spent, we thought God told us to sell that tent. I got a famous evangelist supposed to come. I've run out of chairs. Will you loan us some? <laughs> Joe said, well, you all just use the whole dang place. Ain't nine on a jukebox. Amazing grace. I ain't supposed to be open because of them blue laws, but we'll open the night if it's all right with you Preacher says, well, I reckon it'd be okay. The good Lord works in mysterious ways. He's going to talk about Joshua, Judges, and Ruth, and I reckon I could do it from the DJ booth. <laughs> <laughs> At the First Baptist Bar and Grill. It's the only church in the Bible Belt that smells like a whiskey still. When the sinners finish one more round, we'll have dinner on the ground and go inside and pray we don't get killed. The evangelists came with a well-dressed choir. They showed up around happy hour, looked around the joint, and didn't take it real well, said the white ministry has gone to hell. <laughs> Ms. Mills that taught youth Sunday school and two dickens in the back room shooting pool were sharing the Lord with the Jim Beam rep who was teaching Ms. Mills some line dance steps. <laughs> Reverend White was reading from the book of Luke to a tall drunk trucker about to puke, had John 316 memorized, trying to dry him out to get him baptized. <laughs> the evangelist yelled about the lights and the bear said, White, you can't save any soul in here. This place ain't nothing but a den of sin. Ain't the kind of place Baptist ought to be in. Preacher says, well, we don't really need y'all here. You didn't do a very good job last year. You only saved one sinner. That's Todd McGuire. He's a little son bitch. Set my church on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's beer joint has done been revived. Only been here an hour and it done saved five. Sure, it's got mirrors and a big dance floor, but I finally found the flock God called me for. <laughs> They're at the First Baptist Bar and Grill. It's the only church in the Bible Belt that smells like a whiskey still. I'm trying to think, make sure I don't cuss in here, because usually in the Please show don't. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know the lyrics. And wine in here is always chill. Oh, yeah. And we're here every Sunday. We're living large. We're the only church with a cover charge. <laughs> and if you don't like our doctrine and think we ain't devout, we'll have our bouncer throw your ass out. Of the First Baptist Bar and Grill. Oh, yeah. The Mylar balloons, they're yes. called? Yes. The small ones? The silver ones. Passed silver in the ones. Senate, it's on its way. Because apparently these Senate. balloons cause massive power outages. I can see it's an important, serious business. Mm -hmm. But when, in the course of learning about this, we found out there actually is a group called the Balloon Council. Yeah. This is someone's job, someone's life. They have to take it seriously. I'm sure there are a lot of issues with balloons. Oh, I'm sure. Nothing to laugh at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a serious organization. Oh, absolutely. Dear Bob and Tom, mm -hmm. writes Gary. Gary! I want to know what every other American okay. wants to know. What is the Balloon Council doing about inflation? Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gary, Gary. thank Gary. you for your letter. <laughs> oh. Essential morning radio all day and all night. Some might bug, some might schmitz, but for me, it's Bob and Tom Radio. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Your mic cut out there. Hi, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Could you do it again with feeling? The first time you had it really had it down. Hi, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. There Here's Tom. This hey, time Tom. Uh, now yeah. it's like you looked up at the sky. I know. And there's a, a meteor coming. That's exactly right. Yeah. Or or whatever, an asteroid. I, I I read the difference between all those things. It's come to the Bob and Tom Show. Look out! Yeah. There you go. Look out! Up in the sky, we got a cool uh, uh, pilot story coming up this morning. About a guy flying one of those cool Spitfires, those World War II era planes. Yeah. Really good story. Mm. I'm not uh, up on my planes. Elderly Joe. Oh, you'd recognize this one. It's got the teeth in the front. Oh, it's great. Um, that's, uh, that's on the way. It has teeth in the front? Like those angry eyes yeah. painted yeah. on and painted yeah. on. Yeah. The mouth right there on the planes. nose. You know. Does that make it more... Scary. <laughs> Flyable with teeth? You got to get some British guy on board. I'll nail those krauts. You know, that kind of thing. 
<laughs> Did you mention the British guy because of the teeth? Is that, is that where you're going? They're better than the ones he has in his mouth. No, he just thinks being yeah. British gives him the excuse to say kraut. Oh. Yeah, I was playing a character. character. Your Honor, I was gotcha. playing a character. I, was, uh, <laughs> I, think, oh. that's I think that's one of the uh, one of the less offensive pejorative crowd? uses of enemies. Well, it is if you're not a well, crowd. <laughs> I mean, when you of think course about, not. It's just a... When you think about the, the history of what Right, what people have called the enemy. Yes, you can't even say half. You can't even say most of them on the radio anymore, even though it was an actual fact. Yeah, who knows? Well, what you, you know what? There are lots of actual facts that we can't tell, talk about on the radio, Tom. But anyone who complains, you go to war and see what you yell at the person shooting yeah. at you. Yeah, <laughs> see what you call yeah. them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> In any, yeah, there's a World War II era. Uh, story about it. It's got a charity component. It's very good. I know but, you don't watch a lot of television, but if you're an Apple TV person, they're Masters of the Air is an amazing um, new program that features a lot of our great World War II fighter pilots. It's pretty Isn't amazing. Isn't Elvis? Elvis is that? Yeah, yeah, Austin Butler is in it. Yeah. Oh. He's Colin still being Turner. Elvis if you watch it. Do a leap his new boyfriend's in it, too. Oh, man, look at those crowds, man. Yeah. He's, he's having trouble. <laughs> he's having trouble shaking Elvis. Yeah. Hey, look he at them crowds. Right right right. He does kind of give that. Uh, he had, like, a legitimate issue. Uh, right. With right. Like yes. coach to get him out of it. Hey, man, yeah. that's got to be tough. He's still having a legitimate issue. He's not going to win any sort <laughs> of Maybe he wants to be Elvis in another life. Hey, I'm, I'm oh, Genghis Khan. <laughs> I watched a band of brothers. <laughs> band of brothers in uh, War in the Pacific. I think it was the second one. These the Pacific, are all, yeah. All three, all three are connected, and this the plane one. And I, I tried to watch the first episode of the plane one. I, I, I didn't get into it. Oof. I'll go back. I'll go back to cool. it. Cool. Give it a shot. Uh, do you suppose he carried that Elvis thing into the bedroom? Well, must probably. Have, must have. Now, help me with this. Hmm. Did the monkeys wear the panties? No, uh, no, no. While Elvis watched, no, or the, 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 he, the woman would be in the panties, and then she'd wrestle the monkey. What? The woman wore, Wait. wore With panties. Cameras, and, cameras going. And a bra or topless? I, I'm not sure. I, it was, where, uh, where is this document? It's in the Goldman Elvis bio. The, all right, so the contention okay. is that Elvis would have a woman <laughs> in panties wrestle a monkey or and women. videotape it. And yes. videotape. Cameras Where are going, the yeah. tapes? And this was They're his the thing? That was a, he really There's liked no it. way. Campbell yeah. was supposed to be in the bathroom. Yeah. Really enjoyed himself. Huh? Okay. He really no liked way. it. You got to be bored. These rich guys get really bored. Yeah. <laughs> they Sometimes they get hippos or they become like Michael Jackson. I think something dressed does. Dressed in glittery military uniforms oh, while yes. oh, luring man. children to a <laughs> theme park. <laughs> When you yeah, yes. yeah you, you know, talk about you talk about a guy with a kind of van going hey kid I've got about. a puppy you got Michael Jackson money hey little boy I've got a uh, theme park <laughs> Michael Jackson did wear go military there for a little bit yes it was yeah. bizarre remember, remember he his, had the brushes on right. the shoulders the Super Bowl yeah. thing and he had the fake cast on what a weirdo yeah, <laughs> yeah. what a weirdo oh what a that? definite weirdo remember the yeah. fake cast <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, remember the fake cast. And then he had the one glove, oh, and then yeah, he had the, but yeah, he went through the whole military one thing. One glove, like a glitter. I'm not sure what one what line. what uh, army would have their uniforms made of glitter. <laughs> I would assume there'd be some like disadvantages to that at night, for example. <laughs> Just yeah, wait for, wait for the disco ball and fire. <laughs> don't wait till you see the glitter in their eyes. Yeah. Whatever imaginary force he was part of, though, he looked a uh, uh, high up muckety muck. Yes, I think so. Yeah, he was. He was, was up there. General, 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 yeah, yeah, general yeah. Jackson. It was very impressive. Uh, now, well, speaking of uh, Michael Jackson and the Super Bowl, the had Super many young Bowl, men under him. Super yeah. Bowl halftime. Oh, they're very good. <laughs> 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 Underscoring the, Is that right? uh, the sodomization of, the, uh, of, the half of our nation's show. youth. Uh, all right. Um, All right. uh, where were we? Oh, we were going to check in with the sports desk briefly. Is that... Did you watch that documentary? What's that? The Michael Jackson thing? Yes. No. no. What no. is it? Neverland or something? Neverland, yeah. There's a couple of documentaries. <laughs> oh, I They're think maybe I saw enough to where I went. Yeah. Oh, no, I knew he was a monster. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, yeah. I, I Good music, but yeah. uh, uh, trouble, troubled man. You know who was in it? It was uh, Elvis, the guy who played Elvis. Oh, Austin Butler? <laughs> what do he sound like? Oh, he's uh, hey, was, uh, <laughs> hey, Michael, can I come over and uh, oh, he uh, was. do my Elvis for you? Uh, uh, pet really? the, uh, I pet enjoy pet my giraffe. daughter. Got a pet a giraffe coming up. Oh, that's yeah. right. How weird. What? Elvis was, or uh, Michael Lee. Jackson was you with married. Lisa Marie. Yeah. Wow. Remember that when the weekly world news was all of a sudden mainstream media? Yes. Remember that? Wasn't he with Brooke Shields for a while, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Beard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, Brooke, Brooke Shields, here. Michael, and Emmanuel Lewis would walk into a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> I love the show. Yeah. Tell me, tell me that ain't a great joke. Okay. 
Uh, Super Bowl 58 coming up this weekend, kids. The uh, Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Kansas City, are underdogs heading into the Super Bowl. They're uh, getting two points, believe it or not, against the San Francisco 49s. And you're going to, uh, you're taking the Chiefs. Is right? I don't know if I am or not, yes. I haven't and decided. You see that to... sad story about the puppy bowl? I can't. What? 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 Oh, three of the puppies from that first puppy bowl have CTE. Oh, jeez. Oh, man, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's walking around meowing. Yeah, it's <laughs> bad. Well, you suckered me right into that, didn't nice, you? Nice tag. Thank you. Jeez. If I'd written that down, I'd write that with it. Uh. Uh, I don't know how many people are mad at you, but it's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, they, they can't, you if you pita. can't take a joke, change the channel. For God's sake, got, I'm kidding. Jesus. <laughs> Have there are no the... CTE dogs from the puppy bowl. No, of course not. <laughs> Have you seen the um, the leaked uh, Budweiser Clydesdales? I think there's a puppy involved in that. And... Boy, are they really the they really pull, they pull the heartstrings, don't uh, they? they? You you go online, you're going to see the commercials. Oh, um, right now I'm kind of mad at one That's of my like puppies. Getting, right looking now. at your Christmas presents a, before Christmas. It's a frosty morning with the Clydesdales, like it oh. always is. Yeah, I'm with Christian on this. I like to see them during the game. Yeah. Well, you, you don't have any choice anymore. Well, I do. I don't have to watch them till the game's on. Well, then you, you're not you have to. You don't have to go on social media. You don't have to I do all this I wasn't on stuff. social media. I was on many of my uh, my uh, websites here. Sure. You don't have to do that either. Manabouttown.com. Oh, Man that's a... Boy, I didn't know you... They let you join? Yeah. I call, they won't give me a thing. They asked I can't get a code word. to recommend you, and it's in the works, they, Well, thank you, man. Yeah. Manabouttown.com. <laughs> well, that's a gay cover. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Quentin's like the old like the old phrase. What was it again? Bachelor, what they used to call it? Confirmed bachelor. Confirm, yeah. confirm bachelor. Oh, you mean gay? Okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you mean gay. <laughs> Why are you mad with one of your puppies? There was an issue yesterday morning. Again? Fecal? Yes. Uh, all right. You know, on the rare occasion that I have uh, any problem with the with the two of them, they, it, it's almost always after they come back from uh, the spa, and I think they get on a different schedule if they're there for oh, like three days. When they get back from their, when they get their nails yeah. trimmed, you've got to take them out like every hour. Yeah. I don't know what they do to them, but oh, but you got to get them in a routine, man. You got to do the same thing. I've got them in a routine, but they for somehow they broke the routine. So now when you <laughs> when you take them out in the backyard. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, and they they squat down, or well, actually, I make them squat down, and then I squeeze their bellies to get the poop to come out. Do you do that? <laughs> Insane, of course not. <laughs> that's well, then that's what any bona fide dog owner will tell you. Now we have coming up in the news what happens when a doggie is on an aircraft. You squeeze and, the call, and nature calls. Uh, could we get back to the Super Bowl? Not just any Super Bowl, it's the Las Vegas Super Bowl. Can you get an edit of this so you don't only have to go the whole 30 seconds before the king kicks this in? This is the edited version. I like this the, is the edit. Yeah. 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 You like the drums? Works. <sighs> Boy, you, 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 you can talk post. over this, it's fine. There we go. You want to get right to the king? Hmm. Maybe seven, right, eight seconds. Right to the king. Okay. Jay, Jay's just sitting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there seems to be a different opinion. Okay, from there. <laughs> All right. Uh, have you seen the sphere yet? They uh, they make it look like a football helmet. Man, is that something? Oh, that's cool. It's wow. a giant football helmet. How big is that sphere, Tom? Do you have any? Uh, mm. Imagine what? imagine a big arena with a big globe around it. Look at. <laughs> Boy, I'm gonna say it's at least thirty by forty. <laughs> Feet? At least. At, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Imagine a big arena with a big globe around. Yeah, boy, do you yeah. take lessons in, in pissing on stuff? <laughs> I swear you do. Well, I mean, the, the, who's next at the globe? What, U2 is there? The, U2 is uh, there. Question, dead by dead the coming dead up. Company. He yeah. will totally ask you. Oh, absolutely. How big is that? Uh, how big is that? How many, many people how many is, is that? Oh, uh, see. I think it's 18 grand, isn't it? Yeah. Ace, you know yeah. that, right? Yeah. Not bad. That's now, bad. what happens when bands that play music and don't have a big... Oh, you mean like James like Taylor? Did. Yeah, yeah. They're just going to play their music and enjoy it, or do you have to have... I think... Well, hopefully they go to Caesars like... or somewhere else. They, they don't need to be in the sphere. Yeah. yeah I'm just asking. Okay. Oh. It should only be that everybody has to dress up and dance. I like kind of bands come out and actually have instruments and play them. You know, that kind I'm of sure thing. they'll have. Oh, never. You mind. ever liked a good laser show with your music? That kind the of sphere thing? is uh, 366 feet high and 516 feet wide. How so. much water will it fill? I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. What does this have to do with anything? What do you mean? 
mean? It holds 18,600 people. Are they going to have a Super Bowl party in there? Are they going to show seats, the game in there? All seats have high-speed internet access. Well, I have high-speed internet <laughs> access sitting here. What, <laughs> yeah, what the that's that? no big deal. That's no Unless big you can go to a here. concert and watch something else. <laughs> yeah, I paid $400 so. for these seats. So I'm going to go through yeah, my I, email now. I wonder why they have that. Huh. Yeah, why, why do they have that? There must be something incorporated yeah, with, with the, show. the shows. Yeah, yeah pretty probably. cool. Interaction or something. Have you ever seen, uh, what's the thing where they're on rubber bands and the people are bouncing around? Oh, rubber bands? Yeah. Cirque, Cirque du Soleil. Soleil. Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> Boy, that would oh, be a good just, oh, show. Oh, yeah. I just saw their Christmas show, whatever, six weeks ago. It's fantastic. Did you? I love the Cirque du Soleil. Do they have a, they have a traveling tour or did oh. you go to Vegas? Yeah. So they, they do. Yeah, the tour, yeah. Yeah, it was great. I didn't care for it. It's all. It's all uh, flash. It's all substance. There's no. There's no substance to it. There's at no all. plot. It's all spectacle. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I don't. I don't know what the story is here. What, who's that guy supposed to be again? This is all. You guys all. Do, this is all spectacle. This is you, Tom's. You this is Tom's. You can't review. follow it. <laughs> well, there's now a guy, who's this guy? There's now. a guy in a 20 foot unicycle. I love this. If he falls, he's gonna die. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't make sense to the story. Did you have? <laughs> did you see the two guys who? Oh, press, there you go. Press themselves on each other like they don't have any. They come out and they they, they, they make a big pose with their chest. They come out. Okay. And they're naked. Uh, oh, except for well, their uh, body paint. Their, or their, <laughs> their peens. Yeah. yeah what are you talking about? These two guys in Cirque du Soleil. And the I other, saw the Christmas show. Okay, there was, the no, one there was guy, no nudity. <laughs> well, it's too cold. There's no nudity at a Christmas show. What the hell's wrong with well, you? That one Why guy, are you going the wrong one show? One of the guys had a Santa hat on. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> saw Cirque du Soleil? <laughs> yeah. No, so the guy. You know, that's awful, awful enough. They may use that. Cirque du Soleil. No, they, so the guy hops up on the other guy's hands and he presses him up in the air. Yeah. And then they start climbing on each other. It's hot. I mean, <laughs> fascinating. Yeah. Really the fascinating. The human body. That's where all old gymnasts go. What's Cirque the, uh, du Soleil. No, of course. That's, that's They're amazing. It's great. That stuff's yeah. wild. What was your favorite part of this? Do you remember any part of the Cirque du Soleil? Sure. The, the rubber band? They part? got the thing with the uh, long, whatever it is, silk, like 50-foot silk thing. Silks, yes. They're called silks. silks. Very good. <laughs> Climbing around that thing and not killing yourself. It's a miracle. <laughs> Climbing around on that. All right, dead. everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to the Cirque du Soleil tryouts. Now, our first... Uh, our first, <laughs> we need you to crawl around on these things without killing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they got they had a great juggler. God, it was, I love that stuff. Do you, you like the me. juggler? Love it. Mm. Fantastic. Just, just a bunch of great juggler. Stuff. Oh yeah. <gasps> Tumbling, and acrobatics. Shit. It's the best. Silks. You know what to do when a uh, group of clowns attacks you, don't you? Uh, what? Go for the juggler. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. Ace, you can use that in a few months. <laughs> yeah, buddy, told it. I've already told <laughs> Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I forgot. The, the, the source of all comedy. <laughs> um, uh, what's coming up in sports? <laughs> More Vegas. And this is the music you get, Daddy. Woo. Do you have any uh, suggestions for Vegas music? I'm open to suggestions. Viva Las Vegas. Wouldn't that be the most? We were. Uh, I don't know. How about Cheryl Crow leaving Las Vegas? Uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, no. Oh, Cheryl you know, Crow. Me. Uh, no. How does she sing with her fist in her mouth? Um, Willie is uh, in Vegas. We had a nice report from him yesterday. I don't know yeah, we did. It today. was great. He's got some stuff on the social media. Check that out. Let's get Viva uh, Las Vegas up here. But uh, right, now, oh, okay. right now, right <laughs> now we have time to uh, get an, one actual sports story in. Is that correct? Uh, where were? Oh, e oh, you're. I'll I'll tell you this to tell you this. Uh, Mike Vrabel still not hired as a head coach in the NFL. This is a true story, although it sounds like something I would make up. Vrabel will not be a head coach in the NFL at the start of the 24 season. Everything has been Vrabel. Vrabel. Eight black head label. Coaching jobs Carling's black label. Available. Speaking on the uh, 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 podcast, Diana Russini, an NFL insider, she says. Russini. Has reports <laughs> from general managers that Vrabel's large physical size played a factor in him not finding a new head coaching position what? What? with general managers. Wow. She continues, I don't think there was a fit for him. Uh, I don't think he sat in front of any owner who thought his style was going to work for what they were looking for. And given his size, they didn't feel like they could have a give and take with Mr. They Vrabel. were afraid of him? He's, she said, I had a general manager at the Senior Bowl mention to me Vrabel's physical build 
He's a very large human being and can be very intimidating to people in an organization that are going to be part of these decisions. She said that is definitely a factor with general managers in the NFL. Huh. And it's, but it's football. Wait a right. so, so does that mean, does that mean Andy Reid uh, is overweight by 100 pounds? They're not going to hire him? Well, but he's a, a fun He's looking. a winner. They don't he's, care what you he's look He's a fun-looking 100 pounds overweight. He's got that. Oh, you think like Vrabel's just too intimidating? Uh, Vrabel is too into at 6'4", uh, 265. He's, he was just linebacker size. There you go. That's Wait, what they're saying, Tom. Not they. One, one person manufactured this to get a headline. I don't think so. I think it's everybody out there talking this I way. I don't think it is. No. I All think right. it's fraudulent. <laughs> oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, everybody's being fraudulent then. We're all being fraudulent together. Coming up in sports. Wouldn't you want to have an imposing guy as their coach? Yes, yeah. You would. Yeah, of course yeah. you would. You'd want to have someone who could uh, you go into a bar fight with and you you would uh, want to kick somebody's ass with your head. The coach. suggestion, though, is that the general managers are afraid that they'll have a disagreement and this guy will. They'll either back down because they're terrified of him. That's, or, that's ridiculous. Well, that of course ridiculous. it is. That was a big deal with the Bill Belichick. Nobody wanted to hire Belichick because he was just too, he didn't, he wasn't interviewed. He did the interviewing. And he was the so intimidating. And the general managers didn't care for that. Okay. Um, now, um, uh, coming up in sports, so what is the big uh, the sports pick? Kennedy assassination in sports. Coming up. Wow. Hmm? Yeah, what do you think a, of that? You take uh, you take Oswald plus the points? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm uh, looking you back. Yeah. Bullet points. We'll find out what that's all about. Uh, <laughs> catapult news coming up <laughs> uh, in the news. Uh, you and, ever uh, use a catapult with a fork? You put your fork what? in there and just hit it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> there go the peas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great, yeah. You shoot them across the restaurant? Yeah, you stick a meatball on the, <laughs> yes, on the, a meatball. On the hand end, pound it down, and watch it fly Wang. across the yep. That's a blast. That's a fun uh, time. Speaking of meatballs, best meatballs I've had in a long time, of course, were from HelloFresh. God, those were tasty. Hello, Fresh. Uh, how does it work? We'll see. They're uh, trying to help you have a great 2024 and uh, spice up, if you will, your food life. Is your food life becoming like Groundhog Day, the same stuff over and over? And oh, my God, I don't want to eat there again. I don't want to make that again. HelloFresh can, uh, in a very easy and economical way, uh, literally spice up your life. How does it work? They do the grocery shopping. They do the measuring. They put it in a kit. You put it together. Sometimes just take a few minutes and pop it in the oven. Every week, more than 40 recipes to choose from, from the very exotic to the very simple. And, Christy, you're working on one over there? This is one of the very simple. It's the Sheet Pan Dijon Onion Crunch Chicken. As you can see, two great chicken breasts and the wonderful green beans and garlic bread. Four easy steps, and it only takes about 30 minutes. You have dinner on the table with HelloFresh. It looks so wonderful. Just Yum. A few, few minutes to put it together, then pop yep. it in the oven. But uh, everything from comfort food to uh, if you're doing a low-cal thing for two 2024, maybe a low carb thing. Anything you want, they've got it when you check out that menu. So give it a shot. Right now, by the way, a free breakfast for life, as long as you keep that subscription active to HelloFresh. Get the details at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. That's one breakfast item per box with an active prescription. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Our friends at HelloFresh want you to give it a try. Have a great 2024. You've had a good start. Let's keep it up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, uh, coming up, we have uh, sheep on the loose. Sheep. Well, I guess sheep on the lamb. All right. Oh, well, that's, that, that, that sounds like it's, it's some kind of interspecies violation of life. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Here at the Bob and Tom Radio Laboratories, we've discovered that if you listen to the Bob and Tom Radio Show in the morning, you're going to be all right. However, if you don't listen, there could be some serious side effects. Including general discomfort, memory loss, head spins, confusion, memory loss, itch. Bob and Tom Mornings on 104.7 WTUE. Confusion, confusion, itching, itching, bloating, bloating, ah! 
Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. She climbed up on a bus, <laughs> said that I'll do just about anything that you'd want me to. <laughs> I got tickets to your show from the radio. They were free. <laughs> I said, you got the wrong bus. She said, I know who you are. You're that rockabilly country singing superstar. And I thought that you might like to have a little bit of company. Uh -huh. I said maybe 20 years ago in a different place in a darker room with a prettier face. <laughs> but there's just way too many fish in the sea and getting caught with a whale would be the end of me. <laughs> Don't cry, this can't be the first time you've been dissed. Oh, no. I got brunettes and blondes and red-headed girls and they'll be dropping by soon. Rocking my world. Turn around and go. You ain't on my list. See, only the best-looking tuna Gets to be star kid. <laughs> this may take a while. So how'd it go, boss? He said he's heard worse. He says he's heard worse. He says he hears worse every morning. Classic rock all day on 95.7 QMF. Please forgive us. Because then the, the automatic response is, yeah, I know him. I hate him. Oh. <laughs> well, they, they must know the same cop we know. <laughs> wow. That that's is all, sad. That's the automatic response. Oh, really? That's the worst thing you can say. But, uh, you know, I, I got a friend that's a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a free pass. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh -huh, you can't pull me over. <laughs> I'm assuming I can go on with my life. <laughs> hey, I give it the police fund. Does that help if I have the bumper sticker in the car? No. 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 <laughs> That's the first thing they look for. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Every they drug dealer they just in the go, world has one of those. Boy, you're a chump. <laughs> you just paid for our last keg party. <laughs> <laughs> Essential morning radio. All day and all night. Yeah, this is Bob and Tom Radio. We have, uh, we have comedian Eric Hunter here with us. Eric, I'm guessing just... Uh, I don't know. You're kind of a pasty guy. <laughs> well, guessing. you know, hey, great, great to see you, Eric. Always a pleasure. Well, you know, Eric Eric looks so pale hey, Eric. because uh -huh. he, he's had a 
Didn't you have a family? We have coupons to a spa. <laughs> he had a family. You know, he had. He recently had a family tragedy. Is, uh, he did? His grandmother. Uh, oh, didn't your it was grandmother? very sad. Yeah. yeah. What happened? Yeah. Grams, uh, Grams passed away. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, uh, it was actually a year and a half ago. Yeah. Really? But she was 97 uh, years old. Well, that's a good old. full life. Yeah, she... She passed away after a lengthy battle with a uh, bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn her luck. Yeah. Snuck into the tent, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you're usually the bear wins. Yeah. I'll bet she put up a hell of a struggle, though. <laughs> she fought for a while, but... Uh... <laughs> Feisty old lady. Oh, yeah. Told her not to They're hang food in the tent. Don't hang food up. in the tent, oh, Grams. Oh, oh, my God. I was flying from South Bend to here. I was yeah. on a plane this big. It was like a pack of gum with eight people in it. What happened was we took off from the South Bend Airport Hair Care and Tire Center there. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been there. We got halfway here. We had to go back. It's like a 12-minute flight. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to go back. We had engine trouble. We lost some oil pressure in one of the engines, and they told us about it over the speaker system of the plane, mm -hmm. which was stupid because they could have just went... Hey, we lost some oil. They got to just little turn around and yell at you. The guy sitting next to me is losing his mind. He, he, he goes, uh, he goes, hey, man, hey, man, if one of these engines fails, how far will the other one take us? And I was like, all the way to the scene of the crash. <laughs> Hi, this is Paul. And this is Storm. And we're Paul and Storm. Mighty coming up a little bit later. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show as we look forward to Super Bowl 58. That's right. Turn me up, Ace. Here we go. Here you go, Tom. It's right like city goes oh, in my soul. Oh, it's a king. It's in my soul on fire. Oh, oh, oh. Got a whole lot of money that Do you know the words? Burn, so get I know the part coming up. up. <laughs> There's a thousand pretty <laughs> women. Wasn't he banging uh, everybody? And Margaret? And, and Margaret in this? Yeah, I think so. That was a Oh, in the movie. Shut up! Be by Las Vegas. You know, this is better than a little less conversation. I stand corrected. Well, just a, and we've got this just for you, Tom. Boom. Right into it, baby. Oh. Boom. See? No, thank you, King. <laughs> that guitar is so funny. The whole thing It's good. Crazy. Do we have ZZ Top on there? Dude, that's ZZ Top cover. You like this easy top? Very version? much. Yeah. yeah. Know, really? Yeah. I, love, I don't know it either, Pat. I love both. I, I find it uh, busy. Yeah. It's a little, a little busy for me. Yeah, you don't cool. think that's busy? This one? <laughs> Crazy busy. No, this one. no. They're busy in different yeah. ways. This oh, one's geez. fine. You got the bongos. The percussion guys are sweating. <laughs> yeah, their elbows are falling <laughs> off. Hey, King, slow it down for God's sake. <laughs> Elvis, give um, me a heart attack. He must have shared his speed. Yeah, they are flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, King. Hey, Elvis, those mints you had, boy. <laughs> King, you, King, you got any greenies? I'm, yeah. I got to calm down over here. <laughs> no. What is going on? This is the one Ace likes. I, I love it, too. This is ZZ Top? What? Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll be able to tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, now Very I can nice. tell. Yeah. Uh, formula. <laughs> yes. This is great. That's uh, Frank Beard singing. Ah, uh, one of the great ironies in, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> he didn't... No, but, uh, Frank Beard singing, you idiot. One of the great ironies in life, but Frank, Frank Beard... Frank Beard doesn't have the beard. No beard. Yeah. Tom and I met, uh, ZZ Top one evening, didn't we? Right before their show. Remember that? Uh, we, uh, made a donation to the, uh, Blues Museum, and they were kind enough to accept it. That's awesome. Oh, that's up there. Viva! That's up there, That's right? way up there, yeah. You know, Tom, this is a true... Th Frank Beard d didn't ever sing. Uh, I made that up. But uh, actually, he would go uh, across the room. This is true. Maybe Ace can uh, back me up on this. Frank would go across the room and just sit there and, uh, like, read the paper or whatever. And uh, Dusty and... Uh, what's the Sorry. guy? Bill, Billy Gibbons would be across the room writing a song. And they would get done and they'd go over to Frank and they What did you hear, Frank? And Frank would tell them... Oh, I heard uh, 
these four or five words, and he'd always be wrong, but they will always get a great song out of it. No kidding. That's exactly There they got that ho, 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 ho. That's what I, he said, I heard uh, oh, oh, oh. Sweet, Sweet Putty. <laughs> instead of, yeah. yeah instead well, of ho, oh, ho, oh, That song oh, kind oh. of is. I love that song. About the dangers of Sweet, Sweet. Then he goes, yeah. What's yeah. Tush? Tush? <laughs> yeah. They say Tush. That's a Texas thing. Oh. Uh, tush? Really? Yeah. I'm just looking for some tush. I'm just looking for some tush. <laughs> There's also another Texas thing, which is I'm looking for some, and then... Sweet, sweet. No, it's a, a, a rooster-type word. that oh. It means you're looking for... for Cock-a-doodle-doo? Your, yeah, but it doesn't mean you're... Never mind. What about... Uh, what movie is it? Uh, I think you were the one that told me about this, and I checked it, and it's true. Shaky Puddin'? <laughs> shaky pudding. Don't they call um, uh, they do somewhere. a lady shaky shaky pudding some movie from the seventies? Uh, remember shake a pudding? You remember I that? I do remember shake, shake, shake a pudding. pudding. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of. you yeah. put milk in the, in the yeah. shake yeah. and you shake got pudding. It you remember yeah. it any good? Yes, yeah. I liked it. Was it. it was a it was a white it was, trash. It was a, it was a gimmick that we that we crazy. kids all grew up on. Yeah, that's all you like. Tom's mother, of course, milked the cow, brought it in. Are kids these days eating pudding? I mean, pudding is one of the it's delicious, the world's <laughs> greatest delights. Hey, shut up! Don't let them. Then they'll eat mine. <laughs> oh, I said okay. Delicious. Okay. Shaky, uh, shaky pudding is in the movie Gator ah. with uh, Burt ah. Reynolds and uh, Jerry. Yep. And um, uh, it's some. It's a woman who said, oh, "You want to come back and get some shaky pudding?" Ooh. That's what she well. says. Well. Oh, I remember in the Naked Gun Two and a Half, the guy's reading from the porno book, and he says, "She." He uses the uh, <laughs> the phrase, "Her quivering mound of love pudding." <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's well well written. Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the uh, in the Urban Dictionary, shaky pudding is Southern slang for a woman's. Uh, wow. Yeah, uh, the jiggling of her. Uh, yeah, we got it. Uh, rapture. It's a wonder we grew up with shake a pudding and space sticks that we are still alive I love today. No. Shake a space food sticks. Well, oh, not yeah. space sticks. So oh, sticks. Space food sticks. Remember yeah. the straws that you'd have that had the flavor? Boy, those didn't work. Well, they worked, but there's like the first one or two sucks, yeah. and then you were done. Yeah. You'd put your straw in milk, and it would suddenly be strawberry. It, it, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that one. Mm. Yeah, that, uh, probably got a whole generation cutting up straws and snorting cocaine. <laughs> Didn't uh, you like the the straw that went in the circles? Oh, though? the crazy straw! Finally got in your mouth, man. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. You did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I really. Slowed did. down the delivery of the food. That's I didn't fun. care for that at all. <laughs> is, uh, you suck on that until your uh, could we head caves. Get back to sports. I lost my place. Well, I can. It's the Super Bowl. Now, yesterday, there was a question posed to Brock Purdy. Uh, I'm sorry, Monday night during media night. And if you listen closely, you'll hear what the question is. You and, and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald circling around the Internet right now. People think you two look alike. Did you ever hear that before? The guy I says, it. it's 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 on the Internet, it you says, you look, you look like Lee Harvey Oswald. Talk... You Brock, he's asked Brock Purdy, "Have you seen on the internet that people think you look like Lee Harvey?" Oswald? Yeah. Now he's making the assumption that Brock Purdy's sitting around in his hotel room, cruising the internet, looking uh. at things about himself. You and, and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald circling around the internet right now. People <laughs> think you look alike. Did you ever hear that before? It's, it's, I haven't. Uh, That's my first time hearing it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about yeah. that he blows it off. Uh, Physical and why would I talk about that, sir? Yeah, what, what, do you, what, what do you want from the way? This is why they're cutting back the the uh, access to the players because of morons like that. That's how we get a bad name. Yeah. Right? Go out there and, oh, you're one of those wacky morning shows, mm -hmm. huh? Maybe. Do we know which idiot asked that question? Oh, uh, we don't. Mm -mm. That's I, also I, the would like to say a foreigner, but I know, I'm not for sure. It's also kind of the state of journalism, isn't it? Well, I don't want to indict the uh, what, what, state what estate journal. is it, Tom? Third estate. With, with, with all of the, the with all of whatever the fourth <laughs> with all of the journalists out of work, that guy's got a gig. Mm -hmm. That's because he has a blog. It's essentially, journalists are just bloggers now. Well, I'd true. like to. There's some very fine ones out there. I you know, I'd hope like they to. keep working, but not just not that guy. I don't know who you're afraid of. Super Bowl news coming up, including something that's going to confuse and irritate and anger Tom Griswold. Oh. Okay. Well, that last one did. Um, Lee Harvey Oswald. I thought that make you smile. 
Because why? Because you like anything. Because Lee Harvey Oswald was a hero of yours. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> and Misunderstood I... hero. Yes, <laughs> you're <laughs> absolutely. Um, Jack got what he deserved, right? Uh, completely false. <laughs> I did not say that. Uh, now, um, coming up, we have catapults in the news. Got legs. Jock it up, Tom! Yeah! Too oh. late. <laughs> But thank you very much, Viva Las Vegas. Uh, we are coming back. We have some exciting stuff in the news, actually. A couple of cool world records and uh, a great uh, pilot story and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888. I always heard that his herb was top shelf. <laughs> I just could not wait to find out for myself. <laughs> Don't knock it till you've tried it. Well, I've tried it, my friend. And I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson in a small Texas town. He fired up a fat boy and he passed him around. <laughs> Last words I spoke before they tucked me in. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I'll never, never smoke, smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. <laughs> you can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> Hopped on his old bus, the honeysuckle road. The party was Vegas, it was after the show. Alone in the front lounge, just me and him. With one parting puff, Grim Creeper sat in. <laughs> I'll, I'll never, never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> now we're passing the guitar, telling good jokes. I know one's a coming, cause I'm smelling smoke. <laughs> no, I do not partake, I just let it pass by. A smile on my face and a great contact high. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed, Willie, again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. In the fetal position, <laughs> with drool on my chin. <laughs> I messed up and smoked weed with Willie. <laughs> 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 Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. We're putting our per diem on the roulette table. If we win, I'm getting my nails done at the nice spa on the resort. But if we lose, I'm finding the cheapest manicure you can find off the strip. I'm feeling real lucky. Here we are at Nails by Night. It's convenient, I have to get my nails done. Afterwards, I'm gonna get a little weed pipe, and after that, I'm gonna buy Italian clothing. Did you get the ticket? Price? No tickets, no, we can't, get, we can't afford to go to the game. We can just hang out before it. I'm sick of Taylor Swift and the feminization of football. That's why I got this double pinky paint job, quite masculine and perfect for any NFL fan. Italian clothing. It's loose enough around the arms so you can talk like a this.
first two weeks. <laughs> Put his dumb foot right through the hole. <laughs> yes, yes. Bob Denver, a friend of the show, sadly gone. Huh? Bob Denver did like his reefer, as they say. <laughs> hey, I'm not being critical. <laughs> McGee is the one over there. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is Mike McRae, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Time now for Great Moments in NFL History. The year 1976. The place, Miami, Florida. <laughs> It was Super Bowl X, and America was celebrating her bicentennial. The national anthem that year was performed by a famous blind entertainer, Tom Sullivan. Mm. Let's listen to this rare recording of his <laughs> pregame performance. Oh, say can you see? Mr. Sullivan. What? You're not on the microphone. Take three steps forward. Oh, oh okay. It's this. <laughs> oh. By the dawn's early oh, light. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> While organizers were applauded for their support of people with disabilities. Fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. A little help now. This has been Great Moments in NFL History. Good morning, Sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Pizza Hut, apparently, Pizza Hut. is going to start delivering cold beer along with their food. No oh, kidding. Way. They started uh, the testing beer delivery program in Phoenix, Arizona. And it passed with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone did. Yeah. So how do you prove that uh, you're, you're of illegal age? The company illegal. told Fortune Magazine it bled yes, to expand I'd that. I'd like a large <laughs> pizza, please, <laughs> and 40 beers. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus... We're all on low carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey there, Chick. Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Thank you, Chick. May I tell you a little bit about what they have going on right now? Please do. The Malibu Pink Gold Dipped Rose now available. StevenSingerJewelers.com. The number one gift for Valentine's Day exclusively and only available at that website, IHateStevenSinger.com. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. That Ace Cosby joke of the day coming up. For those of you keeping track, I know there are some of you who write it down each and every day. And you yeah, yesterday had a couple bonus jokes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never forget that. I'm oh. Chick, and here's Tom, and I have the answer for you. Sort of kind of the answer, or part of the answer. To what? Uh, how much the, uh, each member of the winning team gets for the Super Bowl. Oh. It's uh, negligible if you're uh, making... What does a quarterback make? Uh, uh, what Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes? Or, Plenty. Is the answer. Uh, like fifty. Or Aaron Rodgers, fifty million a year. Mm. Um, uh, how much does winning team the Super Bowl get? One hundred sixty-four thousand dollars each member. Conference championship, you get seventy-three thousand. Super Bowl losing team, you get eighty-nine thousand. Wow, one hundred sixty-four thousand dollars each. But individual players have contracts that differ. Certainly. So if you win. Certainly. You're a certain player. You make it even more. Nice bonuses. Uh, uh, yesterday, we had an interesting story about um, some lady almost getting Isadora Duncan on a roller coaster, yeah. you'll recall. Um, the, she, uh, a scarf got caught. Scarf got the, caught in the roller coaster. Of all the things you set up, you don't uh, set up Isadora Duncan. You need to do that. Well, right? I, I do, if Isadora Duncan, famous dancer... Uh, in 1929, this got happened. Her, got her, uh, so. I think it's one of the most famous uh, anti-scarf stories of all time. <laughs> well, yeah. It is. You know, you yes. never... Strangled her to death, but go on. Yeah, um, but in this case, uh, the, the person was not killed. They no. were on the uh, uh, hyper coaster 
Um, oh man, have you rode that <laughs> hypercoaster man? Um, at Warner Brothers Movie World. In any event, uh, yeah, the, this thing, uh, all the people on board got stuck up there. They had to get them all down. But I received this. Um, this is from a guy that was an electrician at a theme park. I won't say which one. Okay. Uh, he goes, sometimes the rides would get stuck from jackets, flip-flops, and other stuff getting stuck in the wheels of the roller coaster. But the craziest thing I ever saw was a lady got hit in the face with a bird. The bird exploded. Her oh. nose was broken. There oh. were blood and bird guts everywhere. Yikes. We used the garden hose to spray down the ride, yeah. ran it a few times to dry it out, and started it back up. Remember that Ugh. same exact thing happened to Fabio? Yeah, good. Yeah, oh, did. oh yeah. yeah. And there's video of it. It's yeah. <laughs> awful. I hit in the face with a bird? Yeah, yes. Fabio. On a roller coaster. Man, that oh. poor lady. Oh, we're coming up on that, actually, when Randy Johnson hit the bird. Uh, oh, with a, yeah. With a pitched ball. It happened in spring training, <laughs> so March crazy. 24th. 2001. Do we celebrate? Yeah, we got it. We got it's exploding bird day. Man. Okay, well, now, um, we have a couple of uh, sports stories to get to here. Can we correct? get away with that? Get a Canadian goose out there and shove an M80 uh, down? No, 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 no. What is yeah. it with you and Canada goose? Maybe if we eat the, eat it afterwards. People can't get too upset about that. Well, you wouldn't. Uh, uh, taste of TNT. You wouldn't, be able, on. You wouldn't be able to have uh, a, a decent... Uh, a, a decent piece of goose. It'd be pieces everywhere. <laughs> Didn't they try? <laughs> Isn't it true? Wasn't there a beached whale in Florida and they tried to get rid yep. of it by blowing, blowing, it, up. It, up. blowing it up? Yeah, yeah. I remember and that story. The whale it was ra raining whale blubber. <laughs> it's raining. Well, sometimes the whales blow up on their own. They fill yeah. with gas. Oh, yeah. We've had that in like a it was like a Tokyo street oh, or that's something. That's how I feel right now. Really? Yeah, You're I'm bloated? having issues. Oh, Go okay? rip some ass. I, it won't come out. That's the issue. Want a, oh, stuck oh, in want there. A straw. Want me to squeeze your belly like I do my my puppy dogs? I need, need a bellows. Gas X is what I need. Uh, okay. Uh, could we move on, please? Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, <laughs> my man. Patrick Mahomes will earn two hundred ten point six million dollars from two thousand twenty three to two thousand twenty six. Brock Purdy is making eight hundred seventy thousand dollars in base salary this season which is part of the four-year, $3.7 million contract he signed as the last pick in the 2023 NFL draft. It means Mahomes earned more per pass attempt this season than Purdy earns per game. Mm. Wow. Mm. Purdy gets 49000 for each and every game he shows up and plays. How about that, Tom? Okay. Here's the story for you, Tom. ESPN, Fox, Warner Brothers, Discovery are forming a new joint venture to launch a sports streaming service in fall of 2024. They announced this yesterday. It'll include the company's portfolios of sports networks, certain direct-to-consumer sports services, and sports rights. Hmm. Subscribers to this new platform will have access to ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN University, SEC Network, uh, and on and on and on. Your thoughts, Tom? Just getting more confusing. <laughs> I don't know what's where? I expected no less. Uh, a thousand channels, and who knows what's where? Yeah. Uh, and how would how do I watch the Super Bowl, Chick? You're saying? Well, uh, it's on CBS this season, mm -hmm. and it's also on Nickelodeon. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. And Very they're good. They will have it, uh, especially for children. They'll have uh, cartoons incorporated into the broadcast. Aww. And uh, I think Slime. if you if you score a touchdown, you get slimed. Cool. And also, also, it will be on Paramount Plus. Do you watch Paramount Plus, Tom? I don't know what I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me this. Uh, CBS.com and the halftime show is uh, Usher and the uh, but Star CBS Spangles. Television will have it. Is that CBS, right? okay. CBS Television will will have it. That's how we we started we started the story. Uh, students in Hong Kong. Oh, is this considered a world uh, stupid world record? Stupid world record. The students in Hong Kong have created the world's smallest humanoid robot. Really. The record achieved by members of the robotics team at a boys' school who crafted a robot measuring 5.55 inches tall. Oh, that's, man, I bet it's cool. The robot, which is shorter than a ballpoint pen, beat the previous record of, uh, beat the previous record by almost half an inch. Oh. To achieve the record, the robot must be able to articulate its shoulders 
elbows, knees, and hips. Let make that chicken fat go. <laughs> and in addition to being capable of bipedal movement, mm. I believe that's walking. So there's little tiny robots we can't see. This is not going to end well. No. We're going to be taking everybody over and, uh, you know what I'm saying. Oh, that's boy. That's frightening. Walking Just around. Robots. This is probably the future of uh, colonoscopy technology, Christy. Mm -hmm. Right now, you said you got a gas problem. Yeah. They can send in one of these guys. Yeah. Yeah, take care of that. Puts on his miner's helmet. What you got in there, kid? I'm going in. <laughs> gas mask. <laughs> Godspeed, robot. R2-D2's going in. Robbie. I'm scared, Sarge. We're all scared, son. <laughs> <laughs> this your first battle, boy. <laughs> Never mind. Just shut your eyes. Hey, at least it's Christy Lee. You see the video of this Not thing? Josh Charles. <laughs> Robots in. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good job, boy. Have you seen the video of it? Yeah, the, ro the robot no. takes on a Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> shows it shows it who's boss. Oh, he rides on it like the yes. Jeep's coming out of France? He conquers like, it, yeah. He actually tames it, yeah. 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 <laughs> no. yeah they're, working on, they're working on a robotic gerbil, by the way. Oh, my, wow. <laughs> Sorry. Did you tell Richard Gere? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, what else you got over there? Uh, one more. Ready? Stupid world record. A gamer from Hungary has broken the Guinness World Record for the longest video game marathon playing World of Warcraft. Oh. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Barnabas... Collins. Vush... <laughs> Vush... He's a foreigner. Con... What? Played the, he played the game for 59 hours, 20 minutes. Yikes. Ooh. Or nearly two and a half days. <laughs> Man. Go ahead, ask the question. His marathon beat the previous record. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Adult Tom. diaper, what do you... Yeah. Shattered See? the record. 23 Should hours, 31 minutes. Uh, after playing for 30 hours, he says he began to get bored. He'd run out of things to do. And around the 45-hour mark, he started to hallucinate. I have no doubt. He hallucinated that he dreamt he had a real girlfriend. <laughs> Nobody wake me. <laughs> he said it was really hard to cope with fatigue, but he never felt it necessary to consume any caffeine instead of opting for water only. Wow. Mm -hmm. He estimates he drank around four gallons over the course of his record attempt, so he must have been able to use the bathroom right. or, or urinate in a diaper or however they had it set up. Hmm. Uh, okay. Do the adjudicators have to deal with the stench? <laughs> hey, uh, I don't sounds think like I don't a think Vladimir... Uh, <laughs> Oh, boy. Barnabas moved again in the. Uh, Vladimir. <laughs> yeah, they're going to make a documentary. No more, yeah. no more hot pockets for Vlad. <laughs> Barnabas <laughs> pooped again. <laughs> that's right. Is that sports? And that's sports. Oh, okay. It's the Super Bowl. We're going to have our uh, Super Bowl pick Friday. Have we decided? Okay, Thursday, Friday. And uh, the official line right now is Kansas City getting two. Really. Two points. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, yep. Coming up, we're going to talk with uh, Reno Collier, a special uh, segment this morning. Also, Sadie Allison, who is the expert on uh, adult toys for the bedroom. Uh, she may have something that would be a, a perfect Valentine's Day gift. Also, sexy time with Allie Breen is on the way. Christy, what have you got up next? Uh, not a lot of sexy news. We have, Although we do have breast plants in the news. Abba, abba. If you like breast implants, that could be sexy. Oh. Uh, although this, this is story possibly is the, the least, opposite of that. Yeah, this is the least <laughs> sexy story about breast implants you will ever hear. Yeah. Are they still selling sure. uh, the stress bags that were breast implants? The used breast implants? They were using those as the stress ball deals? Re repurposing? They were game worn? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we'll, find, we'll find out. That's uh, somewhat distressing. Uh, now, Chris Lee, what's that on your wrist? Oh, that's my beautiful at last bracelet. Thanks to Steven Singer. This would make a beautiful Valentine's Day gift. No, it has um, gorgeous baguette diamonds set in a vintage setting, and it's very affordable. $248. She is going to swoon. What about the uh, rose right over there? That's a Malibu pink yes. rose from Steven Singer Jewelers, and it's uh, going to last forever because it's dipped in 24 karat gold, hand painted, and those are about $59. They come in a beautiful collectible box. Uh, and a Valentine's Day card. Now, Christy, of course, suggests you get the bracelet and the rose. See what I'm talking about by going to IHateStevenSinger.com. Get the order in today before 2 o'clock Eastern Time, and it'll be going out today, so you'll have it with plenty of time to spare for Valentine's Day. Once again, the place you go is IHateStevenSinger.com. A beautiful, personalized Valentine's Day card. Free lifetime guarantee, of course. And if you don't like it from Steven Singer, you send it right back for its full value. 24 karat gold roses. 
hand painted, and Malibu pink is the color of the year. But there's lots of other colors available. Uh, just uh, ask Stephen. Once again, you go to I Hate Stephen Singer. Dot com. Don't forget, Valentine's Day just around the corner. Fellas, you can knock this off right now. Pull over and uh, get it done immediately, and you'll thank me. I hate Steven Singer.com. Don't be the guy buying the roses from the guy under the bridge that smell like cemetery vomit. No, get something nice for her, okay? Okay, you're welcome. Uh, when we come back, uh, we have uh, Should Your Robot Speak Your Language with an Accent? We'll find out. And they found some sharks in Kentucky. How cool is that? We'll find out about that, too. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, man, it's Donnie Baker. It's come to my knowledge and attention that some dick named Scott Potasnik's Potsickers, whatever his last name is, has been bragging about going behind the scenes. Well, I got a backstage pot. I had a backstage pot. I'm allowed in here. This is a recording studio where Bob and Tom do a lot of their stuff. It's called the Static Shack. I swear to God, man, look at this right here. Spiral staircase. I mean, this is as close as I'll ever come to visiting Graceland. And the fact remains, they've got everything here. Look at this. They got twin towers. That's what I call them. One commode next door to another commode. I swear to God, you could drop a deuce and play Battleship. This right here is the actual behind the scenes of the Bob and Tom store. I bet you didn't know they had a store. They have to. It's state law. And if you buy stuff from BobandTom.com, you have to get it here. All kinds of tapes. Countless tapes. Even got a computer. And look, mobile staircase on wheels. You can make your own Paula Abdul videos. They even got Donnie Baker tapes. I swear to God they do. This one's mine. Prove it. And I don't care if there's a barcode. Don't fit. Yeah, man, there's more halls here than Al Capone's vaults from during medieval times. Matter of fact, somebody's in here working. Hey, man, I got a backstage pass. It, oh, uh, PJ Yingers does a bunch of the artwork on the no. Bob and Tom albums and stuff. And you don't care if we come no. in here, sit on the couch and no. everything. No. no, I swear to God he does. He, I'm allowed in here. And we chit-chat and do all... And what are you going to do about... <laughs> Man, they've got everything here. This is basically Bob and Tom's Hall of Fame. You can see the Bob and Tom band, and obviously you can tell Bob's a big fan of the Beatles. There's so much in here. This is going way back. This is basically Bob and Tom's version of the History Channel. Archival tapes back before AM was even a band. I swear to God, I've looked for my rips in here. It's a lot better than Ancestry.com. Matter of fact, I got a membership and a password, and when I uploaded my picture, they transferred me to Ancestries.com. Explain that, chick. Come down here. Tell me this ain't badass. Bob and Tom got their very own strobe light. I got one too, but I still got six more payments at Spencer's. But there is probably the best place in the entire recording studio to shoot a porno right here in this hallway. And with the strobe light, you can make the good ones. I don't know. What's in here? I think this goes right to... Oh, hey, it's Alan Jackson. He's the recording master here at the Static Shack, bragging about how he has Dolby sound and bass, whatever. Funny. I got better on Pioneer speakers. He probably makes 400 grand a year just sitting there. Again? Huh? I, look, I told you I need at least a five and a half week notice them, before you show up. Them faders need WD-40, and they're supposed to be even. I swear to God they are. Well, some people call them faders. I call them sliders. Uh, well, uh, those will give you farts. <laughs> I swear to God they will. Alan Jackson. Yeah, Donnie. We're okay. busy. Okay, whatever. Prove it. Well, we've basically reached the focus point of this entire tour. This is where it happens. Right here. These are real drums. This is where bands come in to record acid rock tapes. You can name them all. Most of my bands, Dirt Knuckle, Hood Snot, Mucus Plug, but that was during our Christian rock days. But you can tell, real pine wood recording panels. They've even got soundproof herpes there's everything in here and this is where the music is made and this this room here this is uh um i don't know what this is but it basically reminds me of every haunted house i've ever been to watch your step 
Watch your step. All right, now you've seen the bands. This is where some of the radio stuff happens. Come on in here. This is where Bob and Tom behind the scenes types do a lot of their funny skits. I swear to God. No, I'm going to myself a show out of plankton and chicken bones. This is a Mr. Obvious show. I love you guys. Which one's Mr. Obvious? Are you the caller? No, it's Sid and Bart. Yeah. Wait, you're the dick on the news that... Uh, no, no. No! Uh, Say Fox 59. I'm not going to do the Fox 59. This is a guy that no, knows the Powerball numbers. I swear to God he does. I could hold you for ransom. Yeah. We're security. In I'll this. manipulate it. Yeah. Now we're at the epicenter of this stupid place. This is Tom Griswold's office bragging about I went to an Ivan League college and it really ain't that big. Hell, my boss Randy's got a bigger office than this. Look. Got aluminum siding for walls. All these stupid pictures that he thinks are cool. Anybody can own a cartoon. And look, I'm glad to see Tom saved up to get Liberace's jacket. I'll say it right to his face. I swear to God, man. Uh, I just ran into Donnie Baker in the parking lot. He said he was giving a tour of the Static Shack. Yeah, and the dumbass didn't even go into the main studio. You know we don't let Donnie into the main studio. Besides, I've got a session for Tom in a few minutes with six elbow players. Trash 10 seconds ago, just got run over by a train or something, still has leaves stuck to its rear end. It's bulimic and anemic. Then <laughs> the girl's going to tell you, like, the story how she met the cat. Oh, I put, some, I put some milk out on Tuesday. She drank all the milk and came back on Wednesday. That's a beautiful story. Take your top off. <laughs> Comedian Diana Jordan is here with us. Now, can I ask you something? Yeah. Since you've been here last, have you had any augmentation of any kind? No. Okay. Must what, be oh, I'm wearing the Wonder Bra. Is that, are you kidding? I, yeah, no. <laughs> I just showed it. Impressive. Yeah. They call it the Wonder Bra because when you take it off, the guy wonders where in the hell you're <laughs> Hey, this is Mike for Coliseum. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. And it's Super Bowl week. We're all getting our parties together. I know I have a total of zero parties to attend. I'm pretty excited about it. I'll watch uh, old movies. I got this uh, poster in the mail, Tom. It has 100 movies on it, but it um, it has a, a scratch-off, like a lottery ticket. So you go in order, and you scratch off to see which movie you want to watch that day, and you watch all 100 on the uh, on the poster. Cool. Have, did I explain that okay? Eventually. Yeah, okay, eventually okay. you watch all What if you don't like the movie? They're all the greatest movies of all time. You oh, have, well, then you, you got to like them. You right. have to watch them. Sounds right. like a good idea. What have yeah. you watched so far? I haven't watched any oh, so yeah. far. Well, I'm going to start it on Super Bowl Sunday because that, for me, begins the off season. Oh, oh no, you got see. something to do with that's very the smart. Longest off season of my life. Uh, now, um, uh, Pat, yes, uh, sir? you mentioned to me just in the hallway this, um, we were talking about the Canada Goose sometimes called Canadian goose, the, the the geese. Why did these come up in the news recently? There was uh, a woman who invented, uh, or there were some scientists. Oh, who that's was, right. Uh, yeah, they, they, what, what was it, Christy? They invented uh, facial, facial recognition, recognition. Yeah, for geese. At the Conrad mm -hmm. Lorenz Institute yep. in And Austria I want to put a something. firecracker inside one, see if we blow no, it up. stop it. We're getting letters asking us to please do it. Oh, uh, okay. That's blow right. it up? Uh, now, <laughs> Let's um, do it, Tom. But here's an interesting news story. A woman saved... <laughs> Her pet goose from a bald eagle, all while breastfeeding her baby. Oh, yeah, this lady's a badass. Yeah, we've seen this video. She is. Uh, her, her name is Kate Oakley. She was breastfeeding her four-month-old daughter, Willow, when she heard her pet goose, Frankie, in distress and <laughs> oh. saw an eagle circling above. Oh, no. Only wearing her underwear with the baby still at her breast, she rushed outside and chased the eagle away. And, of course, it was caught on video, and it went super viral. So uh, just one of those cool stories out there. Uh, so, I mean, the, uh, think about the baby. Right. Dinner and a show. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? And a, and a milkshake to boot. Where, where are the fries? Quite. Uh, uh, Pat, you said you have a tribute to I this? I do, yeah. This is for Chick. Oh, good. It was the third week of June, another crispy <laughs> Canadian tea. <laughs> Dad was taking a shower and his wife was breastfeeding their baby. All of a sudden, there's a squawking in the yard. Could it be the hands? 
He yelled down to his wife, honey, please, will you check the pens? And then she says, oh, no, there's a bird of prey, and uh, Frankie the goose got loo. <laughs> a house. That's when a breastfeeding mama three beat her giggle off her pet goose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she ran into the yard with her boobs out, clutching her kid. She fought with the eagle and barely, barely kept her nipples here. <laughs> I watched the video over and over again, somewhat delighted. There's a hint of bush at the 102 mark that gets me real excited. <laughs> <laughs> and that part where she beat an eagle off. Oh, yeah. Her pet goose. Uh-huh. Is where a div- divorced dad of one beat off a little something, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's me at the end there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry, I stumbled all over there. Uh, a nice that. little tribute to the Tallahatchie Thank Bridge. You. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, email you. for Tom. Dear Tom, Tom speak. Uh, I couldn't think of the word for eggnog the other day. Right. <laughs> so I asked, um, honey, do we have any Christmas milk left? <laughs> That's brilliant. Isn't that great? Like Very that. good. Yes. Very good. How do, do eggnog sales plummet the rest of the year? I assume. Are they you must. A, can you they buy must. it yeah. year round? Hmm. I don't know. I look. Oh, I don't okay. know. Well, thank it's you like very cranberries. Much. The whole cranberries get. Now, uh, uh, that was a nice tune there, Pat, about a real event and took place in Canada involving a, uh, a great mom doing some breastfeeding. Well, speaking of breasts and boobs, this is uh, a story that um, is as unsexy as anything you will ever hear about the female breast. Yeah, a, a Reddit user reports she was offered her late grandma's breast implants after her cremation. Wow. Here you go. While implants made from non-metal materials are usually not removed from cremation, she claims the funeral home decided to take them out anyway. She reports that shortly after saying her final farewell to her grandmother, a team member from the funeral home took her aside to ask whether she'd like to take the breast implants home with her. Her grandma's boob me downs? (laughs) (laughs) Oh. By the way, she did not report whether she accepted them or not. Another woman shared the story that they collected their relatives' implants and now keep them in a box in their home. Isn't that lovely? This lady said, quote, my aunt has them now in a box. They just put them in there, purple on the mantle. Yep. Yep. That's, uh, well, well see the- my family titty box? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell else you going to do with it? You know, so, I got it right up there. They, we got um, Grandma's cookie recipe. Yeah. And there, there's a pity box in there. The, what did you say? Uh, yeah, I, I inherited cleavage from my grandma. I'm going to have them planted in there just so, you know, kind of keep the tradition going. Boy. <laughs> That's insane. Cra- yeah, that is crazy. Our Christmas I Club not. savings books up now, there. Now, I assume I, I would have to speak to a qualified physician or medical professional. I assume that they can't re- no, plant they're not going to replant that. Especially because the older ones are made of asbestos, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. That's, those, that's you know, the way those, I understand Those 60s-era sure. boobs. So yeah. they couldn't yeah. cremate them if they wanted to, yeah. yeah. No. Do they, I assume they explode in, when being cremated, right? I think they melt. Oh, yeah, I bet they do melt. I'm going to have to. Is that, I, is that I'll flammable? To, I'll have to reach out to my funeral director niece and find out. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That is, but the funeral home on their own took it upon themselves to slice them open and remove them? I think, I think they, they have, have to, to do that. Yeah. yeah, I, I. What? Yeah. You I, have to. You have to say whether you have anything implanted or. They melt, I think, or something, and, and screw up the cremator. The cremator nine thousand. <laughs> oh, they're using the nine thousand. Well, no I wonder. I think they are. Yeah. You get the nine. You so get, something's. You, it's horse and you Get the nine thousand o two in your. Yeah, it's two thousand technology. I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not trying to be morbid here, but my dad, when he was cremated, uh, had his hat, his favorite hat, with him. So some things they'll allow. Yeah. He did. Clothing. Jake, it's okay to laugh. He, he, he had his hat on. He had it. I don't know if he wore it, was but it, it was in his hand. Because I go, hey, whatever. I, I asked his girlfriend. I go, what? Uh, what did my dad? Where's my dad's hat? Maybe I'll take that. And he goes, no, no, he took it with him. Oh, and I went, oh, really? Wow. And he was like, yeah, he wanted it with him uh, when he got cremated. So it was like a. I have a picture of his hat in my office. Yeah, I was going to say, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did they take his clothes off? Did they leave? That I don't know. I did, I didn't ask if he was fully dressed. Or maybe he just had his hat. If it was knowing my I dad, I don't think they. Knowing my dad, he had his hat. Yeah, <laughs> in a certain area that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's in the will. <laughs> yeah. 
The Cream Under 9000 will take care of hats and clothing and everything, but it, it can't uh, breast implants. It, it'll just melt them. Like they made of well, quite a mess. Well, I mm. It just seems odd to keep them for any particular reason. <laughs> I, I reached out. Let's see what she says. I, I'd be curious to see if they could be replanted in someone else's kind of a... I don't think so, Tom. Would that be a, can that you imagine what like... a turnoff that would be, Josh, or with one of these ladies of the evening? Just as you... <laughs> yeah, you know, one of these as, ladies as you, you've employed. As you approach sure. second base, she goes, by the way, those were my grandmas you're about to feel. <laughs> I, had oh, them, I had them replanted. Those are my grandmothers. I have my, my mother's eyes and my, my grandmother's, grandmother's boobs. boobs. Uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> no, there you are. There. <laughs> That's creepy for a lot of reasons. Well, they, they, they taste like... Cottage cheese. Oh. Uh, what is that about? Oh. What? They don't, there's not real milk in them. <laughs> there's, the what lady's so old. Right? Right? It's cheese. <laughs> her boob, her breast milk is so, anyways, cold. that's the least sexy story about the human yeah. breast you'll ever hear. That's really kind of gross. Speaking of milk, officials in Virginia say a spill of milk turned a local creek almost completely white. A what of milk? A spill. Oh, a spill. The Lynchburg Fire Department said responding crews determined the cause was a clogged drain line at Westover Dairy, which allowed waste milk to overflow into the storm sewer and then into the creek. Hmm. The line was cleared, the overflow stopped, and there was no public health threat. You know, love that. Who? Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> they lapped it up. They love it. Oh, cats love it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Catfish. It does not get Catfish. funnier than that. <laughs> Catfish love milk. Uh -huh. are, you, are you supposed to give kitties milk? I know. No, are. you're not. Wait, I, oh, kitties. Yes, yeah, yeah. You're supposed yeah. to give kitties uh, okay, milk. Yeah. <laughs> you're kitty, not? No, you're not supposed to. Itty oh, bitty really? kitty committee. What was it? Does it say the name of the dairy? Because yeah, Westover Dairy. Okay, because it says there's, there's only a two percent chance of that ever happening again. Oh, it did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't read the whole story. I just skimmed it. Uh, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> the whole uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Pat, we got a song about it. Pat, did we inadvertently just do three of your jokes? Holy hell. Because they, they were all left. so obvious. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, no, I, no, you're all good. You're good. So the river turned white, huh? Uh -huh. When I hot dubbed as a mountain, oh, the creek had overflowed. The dairy farm sprung a leak, and then the creek hit the gold. Oh, the water turned to milk. Oh, I wish it turned to wine. But this ain't no miracle, and the dairy gets a fine. Sing it, Levon. Up on Milk Spill Creek, <laughs> it's creamy. Fish are gonna freak. Sashimi, the water has turned white and cheesy. A caddy's dream, if you ever did see Wompy on the king on the down and down. And who see didn't take any of the jokes. He did fine. All right. Thank you, man. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Pat. That was lovely. Hmm. Uh, we uh, return to the news desk with Chris Lee, but I want to warn you, coming up, we're going to be uh, talking with us, uh, with Reno Collier. He wants to tell us a story. Uh, also, Sadie Allison, who is the uh, the expert on uh, the adult toys for the bedroom, uh, just in time for uh, Valentine's Day. And then uh, Sexy Time with Allie Breen. Is, uh, Do you have a special drawer up. in your house? Oh, boy. No. The sexy drawer. Oh, boy. Sexy drawer. No, oh, I bet you do, and you don't tell me. Yeah, anybody. I bet it's locked up. Yeah. yeah. No, the coolest thing I have in my drawer is uh, my new electric lighter. <laughs> huh? What do you need that for? The electric, fireplace. Electric it's lighter? the greatest. Is it battery powered? Yeah. Well, you, you put it, you attach it to a USB and plug it in. And what? Charge, and charge it. And then yeah. it's got a thing at the end. It's got like two prongs at the end and a bzzz, <laughs> like a blue, a blue spark goes sure. between them. Yeah. Oh. So you stick it in the fireplace, turn it on. And <laughs> Wow. It's cool. and it's it's it, it's what it was telescoping. Mm -hmm. It's great. So I you suppose don't you, burn your eyebrows off like I do normally. Yeah, when I'm, so you don't get down there with you trying to light right. the, light your uh, fireplace, and it's the coolest. And I suppose you could probably poke someone with it and zap them. I boy, hey, that sounds That'd awful. Be yeah, a horrible thing to do. It's I cool. think you might be a firebug. You know that. You well, enjoy it. I love having a fireplace. <laughs> yeah, I do. But this thing, just this, that? this thing is great. Yeah. You can even hear it. If you get your ear close to it, you can hear it go <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's awesome. Should I bring one in? Boy, that's sexy. Woof. You're supposed to bring that in and a dog. 
I may bring in one of the dogs tomorrow. All right. Been thinking not the it. one that defecates all the time. No, not all the time. No, I sense. do that enough. <laughs> Je- <Yeah>. Jealous, Christy? <laughs> yeah. What's Passengers again? on board a United Airlines flight were left stunned after a dog defecated on the plane. Oh. This happened on United Airlines flight 498. Traveling from Denver to Portland. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, do not look in the uh, aisle. There is a uh, large, oh, it looks like a zero bar. <laughs> According to TMZ, one of the passengers had let her chihuahua out of its crate sometime during the flight. According to witnesses, the dog then proceeded to defecate on seats and the floor. Jeez! A flight attendant Lord. cleaned up the mess, though some passengers complained they had to wait 10 minutes before the problem was addressed. This is a story? Come uh, on. I'd be so furious. Yeah, that's awful. They were. They should have just waited until the door flew off, then the dog could go outside. Oh, yes, <laughs> hold the dog outside. <laughs> Did you see they had they they had uh, the the missing bolts mm-hmm. in the Three door? Yeah, they're gonna fix Three them. of them. I, yeah. I know what happened. We uh, we're missing bolts. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> uh, what I mean, what do people do with dogs on air- aircraft like that? If I mean, you can't let them out of the thing, or they're gonna do that. They're dogs. Not necessarily. Your dog. Well, never mind. Hmm. Not necessarily. Not all dogs. I've seen plenty of dogs on planes. Sure, and they don't but defecate. I mean, well, this one did. Yeah, this one did. Maybe you shouldn't have fed him those tacos before he got in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a commercial, you know, lady. Well, it was a chihuahua. Oh, yeah. we, don't, we don't really you encourage want? it. <laughs> the New York Police Department say officers corralled an on the lease on the lease on the loose sheep that was wandering around Brooklyn. According to the department, well, the lucky sheep... it wasn't Saturday night. Boy, no sheep till Brooklyn, huh? <laughs> yeah, very good. No, no sleep till Brooklyn. No, no was sheep. spotted running loose in a parking lot near so the, a Costco. So, so wait a minute. So technically, the sheep was uh, was on the lamb. Yes. <laughs> hey! officers, <laughs> officers managed to ca- uh, capture the sheep, take it to the Brooklyn Animal Control, where it was later transferred to a permanent home at Skylands Animal Sanctuary in New Jersey. Not clear where the sheep came from, though officials noted she was found in an area near multiple slaughterhouses. Oh, uh, yes. Mm. She wins. Little, is that mutton? Mm. That's right. You didn't. See, you didn't see that's, mutton. It's <laughs> mutton, honey. Wow. That's a. Well, I guess it's a happy story for the sheep, anyway. Yeah, for the sheep. Now it gets to live out its days in a nice little sanctuary, rather than being on your. Table. I imagine animal control in Brooklyn. Probably it's mostly dogs, cats. So it's got to be kind of a fun day. Oh. Uh-huh. I bet hey. there's some snakes and stuff. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, uh, and mostly, yeah. but you know, rarely sheep. Rarely. Giraffes, some cool stuff. Giraffes. Yeah. Chuds. <laughs> who get out Remember from we had that zebra, that zebra that was, that, did they ever catch that one zebra was running around somewhere in California for more than a month? Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can find out the answer to that. Yeah, What's coming I'll up, Christy Lee? Uh, coming up, uh, we'll talk about wallets of all things. And have you checked out the new Apple Vision Pro headset? Uh, it's making news already. And robots, I have a robot story too, Chick. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. And we got a cool story about a 102 uh, year old pilot. Uh, oh, we. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's not flying a commercial aircraft. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is pilot. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be landing in New Amsterdam in less than. No, it's New York now. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> when did they change that? Uh, this guy's a World War II veteran. Yes. And uh, he's uh, in a badass uh, vintage airplane. It's a great story. Really cool. Uh, also, um, we have an interesting story about uh, an electronic failure that uh, destroyed, uh, inadvertently, 40 years of research. Oh, no. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh, I don't know, backup uh. generator. I'm not uh, that in tune of what happened there. We'll find out all the details on that. And... Uh, sex toys from Sadie Allison and Sexy Time with Allie Breen. Coming up, this is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete cup. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. 
ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. What's the, what's the exact correct name of this? The Pickle Dog. The Pickle, pickle dog. dog. Pickle Dog. Okay, now. Well, we are all Pickle Dog virgins. So, Bob, why don't you go first, and all I'll right. do the play-by-play. -play. Bob, your right hand, you're supposed to put your left hand behind your head <laughs> before you. Oh, no! Pickle Dog down! Okay, now Bob, Bob is now chewing the Pickle Dog. He's about to give his analysis and his review. Uh, Bob. It's delicious. It is delicious. It gets a thumbs up from Bob. <laughs> it's very messy. Are they going to be able to show this very on the TV messy. show? I know. It's <laughs> John. Eat it. It's very messy. Bob, your thoughts? John, I, I shot my hot dog. <laughs> uh, right, mm. out of the, uh, right out of the pickle. Out of the canoe. Well, well some, some people get a little excited when they have their first pickle dog. Well, you know, I, I did, and I, I made a, I've created a huge, <laughs> huge mess over here that actually looks somewhat like a porn shoot. <laughs> <laughs> A truck driver distracted okay. by a Andrew GPS Johnson to, uh, unit crashed near the intersection of U.S. 278 at Arkansas Highway 24 early Monday, spilling a truckload of spaghetti sauce. Camden Police Sergeant Corey Saunders <laughs> said the spaghetti sauce truck was headed to Dallas about 3 a.m. when the driver became distracted, overcorrected, and rolled over after crossing the center line of the highway. The driver suffered minor injuries, but there was sauce all over the road. Oh, oh dear God, 2,000 quarts of blood. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst accident I've ever seen. <laughs> Stand back, there's blood everywhere. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. Do we have a garlic bread truck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just mopped it up with a bunch of garlic oh, bread. Oh, isn't that the best? Uh, mm. Yes, it is. God, I'd rather have that than the spaghetti noodles, <sighs> just the sauce and the bread. What's wrong with you? How dare you put pasta down? I can't eat a whole Kit Kat bar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat spaghetti noodles. They I go can. Right to my hip. But I like the bread part. Better than the pasta? Yes. No, no. The bread's lovely and the pasta's great too. <laughs> Here, here's what Tom's doing telling you what you like. Of course he okay. is. Okay. I'm you used know to you that. like the pasta. Here's one of the fattest things I've ever done. I, uh, <laughs> oh, can we, we have an we intro for this feature? We need an something like boop, 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 boop. Or just play, uh, playing baby elephant walk. Boop, 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 And I know John Schultz shares one of the fattest things he's ever done. And broken toilet seat doesn't count. Now this is this is fatter this is fatter than telling the guys on the phone when you order Chinese takeout that you need four sets of silverware when it's just no, you. No, no, it was, it was <laughs> faking that there was somebody else with. What's that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Two orders of crab uh -huh. right now. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> Rhine, Germany. <laughs> After several complaints about unsanitary conditions from competitors in a sledding event, it was determined that some of the participants were unaware of the precise nature of a particular event. Once the officials removed all the phlegm balls from the course and explained that the name of the event was pronounced Luge and not Loogie. The competition continued without any further problems. Ironically, the eventual winner of the Luge event 
was an Austrian named Karl Bugermeister. <laughs> he took the gold medal by a narrow margin mm. over Norwegian athlete <laughs> who was disqualified. <laughs> this has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> Comedian Greg Warren, former uh, state champion wrestler. You're the son of a wrestling coach. Now, well, I assume your dad was also your wrestling coach. Is yes. that correct? Yes, he was. Yeah, you know, people are always asking me. They're like, you know, hey, that must have been tough. Your dad was a wrestling coach. He must have pushed you really hard. Mm -hmm. He did. I mean, but you think about it. He pushed me in athletics. That's sort of a normal thing to push your kid in, right? I mean, you know, there's people out there who spend their whole lives trying to find Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like to have that guy pushing you? you know? Do you even want to find Bigfoot, son? Because you don't act like it. <laughs> you don't have a tracking map. You don't have night goggles. You don't know how to make a plaster mold out of a footprint. <laughs> what, do you think he's going to show up, son? You, oh, wait, there's somebody at the door. It's Bigfoot, Greg. You found Bigfoot? <laughs> That's not the way it works, pal. You better shape up, because right now I don't think you could find the neighbor's dog. John Joseph is our guest. Uh -huh. Try to figure out the words. Nobody. Dylan, do you know the words to Dylan's songs? Not one of them. Here's every song ever written by Bob Dylan. Right. <laughs> gee, 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 gee. Did I get them all? Did I miss any? Hey, you got them. Uh, Holy <laughs> mackerel, Andy. Is that really his voice? Uh, I think it is. Come on. You, you think when Bob Dylan was in kindergarten class, he was saying stuff like, he took my glue. <laughs> Friday night at Clues. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Super Bowl coming up Sunday. Tom has a big party planned. We're all invited. Very excited. No. Mm -hmm. Huh? No. I don't know why he wants us there at 9 a.m., though. Yeah, that's yeah, going to be a long too day. Early. But uh, we'll do it. Mimosas and... Uh, I can't make it back to church, so... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, nice, Ace. Oh, they're very nice. Um, we were talking about, uh, what was it, a sheep that had escaped running around Brooklyn? Yep. Got a nice letter here from uh, um, Mr. Tupper. Uh, he is uh, <laughs> he's a mailman in a rural area. He sent me a nice picture of this little miniature donkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He goes, uh, this guy would get out of his pen all the time. He's a real escape artist. I would take him back to where he lived when I would see him. I would lure him into my truck with Scooby Snacks, <laughs> which I kept in my truck for all the dogs. Very nice. My UPS guy's always given my dogs dog biscuits. What a really? Great, what a great guy, yeah. But this is just this really funny-looking little miniature donkey. Oh. On the loose. He's got a picture of him. He's on the loose. He, he <laughs> cap captures him and takes him on. What a nice guy. Well, thank you, Mr. Tupper. We appreciate you. Schwarzenegger your has a mini donkey that lives in his house with him. It's funny. That's a lot. Yeah. Does he have a diaper on it? <laughs> I don't think so. A video mm. I've seen is that uh, Arnold's at it's, uh, this table, looks like in his kitchen, and he's having breakfast, and he takes a bite of food, and and gives the donkey a bite of food. Oh, is he to uh, house trained? I mean, I would assume. I, I, I one can assume that he's okay. house trained. Right. Well, that's, that's very nice. Right? And uh, the donkey must be house trained too. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> very clever. Uh, now, uh, Christy Lee is at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What have we missed? <laughs> A, ro a former Royal Air Force pilot took to the skies in a World War II era plane at the age of 102. God save the Queen. Jack Hemmings. An ex-squadron leader with Britain's Air Force believed to be the oldest pilot to fly the famous Spitfire. You know what a Spitfire looks like, right, Chick? Mm -hmm, I don't. Oh, come on. You've seen him. Got the, uh, wait a uh, minute. Yeah, okay. I have. <laughs> the, flight. <laughs> the flight was undertaken at an airfield in southern England to raise money for Mission Aviation Fellowship, a charity Hemmings co-founded nearly 80 years ago. Chick, these are the ones that have, like, the shark teeth. It's a single prop plane. They've got the, the shark teeth in the front it's in uh, two pilots, one in front of the other. Real badass. Uh, the one I'm looking at um, does not have teeth. But it looks like that's part of the engine. I was picturing like it the teeth were painted on the side. 
But that's part of the engine that's coming out, I guess, or something. Yeah, they're pretty. It's a pretty badass World War II era of plane. Those. Yeah, those kinda, are cool. Kind of cool. The veteran who'd never flown a Spitfire before said it was quote absolutely delightful being back behind the controls. Though he said the ride was very bumpy. I did it. Barry Hughes, a pilot who accompanied Hummi Hemmings in the aircraft, said the veteran had a natural touch. Hemmings previously performed ac acrobat aerobatics on his 100th birthday and raised more than $50,000 for the charity. Wow. This guy still got it. Yeah. I, I went up there just to get closer to God to remind him, hey, I'm here. <laughs> I've been waiting. You want to do something about uh, this? They had to mute the microphone. <laughs> they did. Why? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, he's just <laughs> this worried about all those quotes. You know, he's all this just totally inappropriate. Take that, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been a, a softer version of it. Yeah. Isn't it just like driving a car around a roundabout? Yeah. And Except you can die a lot easier. <laughs> uh, well, I got bombs in here. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> I guess. I'm going to go flash the ladies at the nursing home. <laughs> hey, girls. Yeah. <laughs> I got my blinker on. Uh, class. You'll sleep with me now, won't you? 102. Good for you, uh, buddy. Good for him. Yeah. A mechanical organ continues to play the longest and slowest music composition in existence. Oh, really? oh I and can't wait to hear this. <laughs> Chick, it changed chords for the first time in two years. Mm. Remember this? When, <laughs> yes. I when we started this thing, it's... It's the Bay City Rollers, right? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> the organ at a church in Germany is currently playing a 639-year-long piece oh, entitled As Slow as Possible by avant-garde composer John Cage. 639 years. Years. Years it'll take to play. And huh. the experimental piece started in 2001 and not set to finish playing until the year 26. Avant-garde just mean he sucks at what he wanted to do. So interesting. I'm a composer. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm an avant-garde composer. Well, if you knew, oh, how, to write, you knew how to write a song, you wouldn't be avant-garde. I'll get the analese. <laughs> I wrote silence. <laughs> you may know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, what's funny about this, we had this story when it first yeah. started. The, the funniest part of this is the beginning. According to the BBC, crowds gathered to witness the rare chord change, marking the 16th change so far. The next scheduled change will be on August 5th, 2026, if you want to start making your plans yeah. now. Yeah. While the composition officially started in 2001, yeah. it began with <laughs> 18 months of silence, and the first notes only rang out in 2003. <laughs> so they had this big celebration, and then they go, 18 months from now, the first note's going to play. And I saw a picture. Have you seen any of these pictures? They, they dangle sandbags. <laughs> from the keys so it plays the note oh and then they've got some machine that uh, guarantees that the, there's air going through it so it'll continually play the note man i want to destroy it so badly <laughs> <laughs> just rip it apart just sledgehammer it yeah, so i it's my understanding we're gonna have to wait pat i think we're gonna have to wait till 2026 till we get the hook <laughs> <laughs> no bridge why oh, no, no yeah, yeah the bridge takes place in the year 3000 <laughs> Nah. You have to wonder if humanity will be around when this thing finally... I'd like to think so. That's an eerie thought. Yeah. Just just this thing still playing music right. and there's no humans around. Ugh. Just Burgess just Meredith cockroaches. on the steps of the library. <laughs> will you turn that off? <laughs> I'm trying to read. <laughs> it says the uh, mechanical organ was designed using an electronic wind machine to push air through the pipes with sandbags pressing down on the keys. Uh, electronic wind machine. <laughs> creating a drone-like sound. Oh, that's got to be lovely. But there's pictures of this thing changing the note, and there's hundreds of people there. Where is it? Like somewhere in, uh, is it Austria or Germany, I think? Weird. Um, yeah, you got to... There it is, right wanna, there. Want to play it for us, Pat? It's in Germany. It, well, it's one chord. Oh. Yeah, but for how many years? It sounds like soap opera. Yeah, it's yeah. like... <laughs> You're not will, the father? <laughs> will Susan decide to go with Barry? Last time. Find out on Clorox Presents When the Sands of Wind Become the World. <laughs> Haran, Susan's Journey. <laughs> Why did Gladys leave high school and move to some farm in Illinois and oh. came back? Thinner. Thinner? <laughs> Thinner? <laughs> Her boyfriend set off to Vietnam. What happened? Oh, my. 
a real life scenario. <laughs> yeah, no joke. We, <laughs> we were playing. Like a, we were having fun. We're having a fun time. Yeah, a real sad scenario. You know, that, happened, that happened to a friend of mine. Long story. Oh, oh Tom. <laughs> hey, you know. Uh, yeah, no, it, it happened uh, to many people's friends. Yeah, it's okay. awful. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Knock her up. Here's your rifle. Okay. Oh, um, so that's happening. What yeah. else is going on? Uh, coming up, we have uh, a lot more in the news. We have Reno Collier joining us, and we're going to do a lot of sexy time today. Sex. But we also have um, research destroyed 40 years worth in Sweden. Do you want to go ahead and do this now, or do you want to wait and come uh, back? Let's wait, because uh, Reno's going to call us up. Um, the sad news that uh, was released yesterday, the death of Toby Keith. And um, Reno uh, wanted to talk a little bit about... Uh, Toby and some of the experiences he had. Mm, so we'll certainly great. look forward to talking to Reno in just a couple of minutes. Uh, on a much lighter note, we are going to be doing sort of a double dose of sexy time yeah. with uh, uh, Dr. Sadie Allison. We're a week uh, away from Valentine's Day, fellas. Who is uh, an expert in the... Uh, the a sexpert, please. The world of... Yeah, you could say mm -hmm. sexpert. In, in the world of, the, of toys, Josh. Yeah. Of oh, yeah. Uh, the adult toys. Mm -hmm. Things Ooh. that plug in and buzz. And, things that uh, go in and come back out and mm -hmm. things that you yeah. can go in to hover around. on the surface. They don't yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've come a long way. They don't plug in anymore. And so will you. Well. <laughs> They've come a long way, and so will you. Thank you. Uh, that's all coming up. Oh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also... Lincolnshire Wildlife Park made global headlines after staff removed five African grey parrots for swearing at their visitors. That Josh Arnold show. How you doing? I'm Josh Arnold. Now, today, I have one of those African parrots from the Lincolnshire Wildlife Park with us. It's Mr. David Johnstone. Uh, David, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for f***ing having me. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> if you can, please try to refrain from cussing. Ah, s***. Yeah, okay. That, that makes f***ing sense. Yeah, see, no, that's what I'm referring to. We can't really have have that. Well, let me, let me ask you this. You, you f***ing knew that I was a cussing parrot, and uh, you damn had me on anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I knew, but I, I don't get the impression that you're an asshole, but it seems to me that only an asshole would invite a f***ing cussing parrot on a show that wouldn't allow cussing. Um, well, if you can just do your best to not cuss while we're here, I, I would certainly appreciate it. You know, I've never tried not to cuss. I, I'll give it a shot. <laughs>
Exactly exploded. Oh. Then we'll go to Segmac, Arkansas and meet the <laughs> Cheesemen family. We'll hear their true story. A swarm of Canadian wasps attacked and repelled an armed intruder as the Cheeseman family napped in their home following a baked bean dinner. <laughs> Finally, we'll meet Harriet Billingsley, who, upon discovering a swarm of pubic lice, rushed to the drugstore to get a bottle of Quell shampoo and, on impulse, purchased what turned out to be a million-dollar winning lottery ticket. <laughs> Join host Dick Verman tonight for Miracle Pest. Miracle Pest, only on Bob and Tom Television. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> There's laughter ahead. Yeah, I want to grab lunch. We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. Which is why Tom likes it. <laughs> hey, you know... Some people just can't grow up. <laughs> I bought some Twinkies. I bought some Ding Dongs. I bought some hoes and some powdered sugar donuts. I poured some sugar in my Pepsi. I had seven cups of coffee with some fudge. I ate a Snickers bar. I ate a Almond Joy. I poured some sugar on a Milky Way and ate it. And now I'm driving on the freeway. And if you cut me off, I think I'm going to kill you. Yeah, yeah, kill you, kill you. I pulled a booger <laughs> out of my nose. I poured some sugar on the booger and I ate it. Yeah. I'm eating sugar boogers. I'm eating sugar boogers. Yeah, yeah, sugar, kill you. Sugar's good. Yeah, beep. <laughs> <laughs> he beeped there at the end because that was an uh, answering machine. Answering was machine it not? Message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that, I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right, woke chick up. Uh -huh. mm. In my fantasy, I am making love to this woman, yeah. and then all of a sudden she feels the earth move beneath her. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first, everybody. Safety first. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, hello. Josh Arnold's over there. Chickster. Ace Cosby. Howdy. Uh, Sadie Allison will be joining us. Jess Hooker will be joining us with uh, paraphernalia from the uh, adult entertainment world. Well, no, it's not really adult entertainment. It's, huh? it's from the bedroom. Dr. Sadie Allison is a, uh, as Josh what was that word you used? Sexpert. That's uh -huh. right. I kind of I don't like that word particularly, but uh, she's well, uh, studied. Um, she'll give us some edutainment. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the artificial uh, stimulations of uh, various. Uh, no, that's real stimulation. Ele electronica. Okay. Um, in any oh, event, uh, uh, from ticklekitty.com. And uh, we'll find out what's going on there. I think she has the new dildo obscura, which I'm real excited. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It it, uh, huh? it projects. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, the opposite direction of. That's on a, a much idea. on a much different note, um, the uh, the oh the handsome factor kicks in. There he is. I look at the big screen in our room. I can see it's Reno Collier. Where are you, Reno? Good morning, my friends. I'm at my stepdaughter's house down in Florida. Ooh. Oh, very nice. Well, making videos? I was going to say, there's a couple. Of... <laughs> is that Dolly Parton behind you? No. It is yeah. Dolly Parton. Yeah. That She's is? She's young, yeah. but she has good taste. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Oh, okay. Looks like Farrah yeah. Fawcett. Uh, young yeah. Dolly. Okay, okay. Oh, now, yeah. Um, <laughs> or, or, or Reno. Um, Hello, Dolly. <laughs> uh, you and I were talking yesterday, and uh, uh, Toby Keith, uh, very sad news, Toby Keith died a few days ago, and uh, Toby was in here and did, did some of his bus songs. The, the, they were songs he kind of <laughs> just did with the fellas on board the bus for fun, and he did a couple of them here. Ended up having to do them in concert because people liked him so much. But uh, Star Kissed and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. And you, you knew Toby? I not. We weren't like best friends or anything. But I was lucky enough to uh, do a Comedy Central roast with him, and he was good friends with Cable Guys, so he'd come out to our shows. And then in Nashville, we'd go out drinking and running around sometimes, and just a killer guy, man. And I just, I was, I was thinking of all the funny stories um, about him and Toby as everybody knows, was a huge uh, supporter of the troops. I mean, right. that was his kind of go-to thing. So whenever I'd go to Iraq and stuff to do shows, everyone's like, oh, Toby Keith, Toby Keith, Toby Keith. So I come back from one of them, and we're all sitting around talking, and, and I had this story about uh, we were in Blackhawks flying over uh, Baghdad, and you could see at night the green tracer shooting at, the, at our helicopters. And we landed... And my buddy PJ was uh, like, man, did you see him shooting at us? I was like, yeah. 
and those were our troops that had to sit through your show. You know, like, I, <laughs> I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I had these great stories, right? So as any consummate storyteller will do, as I'm sitting here babbling about grenade launchers and stuff, after me just rambling, Toby goes, well, I don't want to be uh, an uh, outdoer, but I've got one. And I'm like, all right, what you got? And he's like, okay. So it was about two weeks before Toby was supposed to go to Iraq and his opening act fell out. And he's like, he's telling me, he's like, he's like, I don't, I don't have anyone to go with me. And he's like, I'm last minute thinking. And he goes, who would go on this? And he goes, Nugent, I'll call Nugent. So he calls Ted Nugent. He's like, Nugent, you want to go to Iraq? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. When are we going today? We're going to, and he's like, no, we're, we're going in like two weeks. Right. So for the big stars, they fly private over there. So Toby gets Ted Nugent. They get on the plane. They fly to Italy to go through customs. They get them off the plane. And when they're on the plane, uh, Nugent's pacing back and forth on the tarmac. And he looks like he's freaking out And while they're searching the plane. And Toby, he's, Toby said he's thinking, he's like, you know, he doesn't do drugs. He doesn't really drink. And he's like, Nugent, he goes, what is, what is wrong with you? And he goes, well, look. I took my pistol apart. It's hidden in the airplane, but I've got a hundred rounds of ammunition wrapped around my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> and Toby's like, what? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I got 99 for the Iraqis and one for Uncle Ted. <laughs> and Toby's like, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? He's like, we're going to play the guitar. We're not going to war. He's like, well, you know, we just, we got to be prepared. You never know what's going to happen. And Toby's like, you got to be kidding me, man. So they don't find the gun. They get back on the plane, they fly over to Iraq. They're bouncing around doing shows at all the different places and everything and going into, you know, whatever. So they'd always let us shoot really cool stuff. So on the last day of the tour, all the troops are lined on the sides of this firing range. There's people sitting up on the tankers and they're firing this 50 cal just, you know, and the Toby comes down and the, the troops are like, Toby, Toby, and he's waving and they're going crazy. And you're out in the middle of the desert and he's just like, gah, 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 and he starts unloading these things and he's blowing the stuff up and everybody's cheering. And then they're like, Nugent comes over and they're like, all right, Ted, you're up. Nugent gets down there and he's like, they start firing he starts firing he runs out of ammo and toby said all of a sudden out of nowhere nugent does some crazy police roll pops up in some police stance pulls the pistol out that he brought <laughs> and started unloading clips on the dummy on the ground like bow, 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 bow. and the troops are like you gotta be kidding me this guy has his own gun and they're like nugent <laughs> And Toby's like, I'm standing there going, wait a minute, I'm the USO guy. I didn't bring a gun. How come everybody's cheering for Nugent? And he's like, pow, 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 pow. The whole place goes absolutely berserk. So Toby's walking over and he's sitting there and, and you know, he's like, he's like, I'm sitting there going, you gotta be kidding me. What the hell is this guy doing? So he goes over, tells the head of the USO, he goes, look, me and Nugent want to come back in like six weeks. Because Toby was over there all the time. And the lady goes, uh, Toby, you are always welcome here. And he's like, what about Nugent? She goes, no, no, Ted should be in prison. <laughs> when, when he, he broke more international laws wandering around. So Toby said the whole flight black, Nugent's crying. And Toby's like, dude, you brought a gun to a foreign country and went and ate with the troops. And they never, they banned Nugent. But he... <coughs> He t the way he could tell a story was, as a comedian, you know, we think we can tell stories, but those songwriters, I didn't even do that justice the way he told it, but he was such a consummate writer, you know, even the silly stuff and the fun stuff and everything, but I just feel like that era of country music and men, you know, a man's man and all that stuff is, it's just slowly fading away. And, you know, Toby and I weren't best friends. I, I put something on social media and people were like, you know, I'm praying for you. I'm, it, this isn't about me. I just was lucky enough to go out and get drunk with a dude a bunch of times and hang out and hear fun stories. But, but in talking to him, I would think, man, that he would be most want to be remembered for the stuff he did for the troops. And I know how much the troops love that dude. So no, I just no, wanted to share a well, little. Thanks, uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, no, once again, we're, we're speaking with Reno Collier. I assume when you were over there, they asked you not to get near the weapons. 
Dude, they, uh, I got to fire this 50 cal one time out of the top of this Humvee. <laughs> and uh, I got so excited because they let us shoot everything out there. You're out in the middle of nowhere, you know? Like when you're in Africa, there's nothing out there. So I'm shooting it, and the we're too close to the berm. They told us not to put it on automatic. And I had some poor kid who was a private who had gotten in trouble for something because they stuck him with me. And he's like, do whatever you want. And I'm like, yeah. Well, the, the bullets were going into this berm and they were hitting other stuff and shooting back and flipping over the top of us and catching stuff on fire behind us. <laughs> nice. and all, and, yeah, and I'm just like, gah, gah, gah. it was like in taps when he's like, it's beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't see what's going on. And all of a sudden, this sergeant comes over, jerks this guy out of my Humvee, and he's like, sir, sir, take it off automatic. I turn around, there's people laying on the ground, and I look behind me and there's these little patches of fire and i'm like what the hell is that and they're like that's you you redneck they're like you can't keep firing it was, those things are so much fun to go on man wow well uh, 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 reno thank you very much uh we'll look forward to talking to you again soon are you uh are you uh, working down in florida I was. I'm. Uh, my next shows. I'm going. I'm back on the road with uh, Larry the Cable Guy. We're going to be in Mesa, Arizona, and Reno, Nevada, and then I'm going to be in Abbeville, South Carolina, St. Louis, and then Nashville, Indiana, and uh, and then Cincinnati. I'll be at the Brown County Playhouse. I got a bunch of stuff okay, coming good. up. The play's over, baby. Fatty's coming home. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Reno. We'll talk to you again in a couple days. Love you guys. Bye, Great story. Great Thank you. See you, Reno. Thank you very much. Um, now. Um, we have, uh, let's see, where are we time-wise? We have, uh, we have, uh, Sadie Allison coming up in just a couple of minutes. We're going to talk with Willie, who is in Vegas, uh, getting, uh, involved in the pre-Super Bowl festivities out there. And, uh, as Chick mentioned earlier, they've, they've kind of got nothing to do as the teams get ready. Viva! What do you mean? Well, the they report... sit around and sing an Elvis songs thing. The one reporter asked Purdy if he knew he looked like Lee Harvey Oswald. They're really... Uh, and it sounded something like this. Of you and, and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald circling around the internet right now. People think you two look alike. Did you ever hear that before? I haven't. <laughs> God, yeah, and he tried to... Uh, that's why they're cutting back media access for some morons like that. If you yeah. care, I have an update on the implant story. My funeral oh, yeah, director yeah, yeah. niece No, this was the woman... Uh -huh. On Reddit, who said that they... She uh, was offered her late grandmother's breast implants after her cremation. While implants made from non-metal materials are usually not removed, she claims the funeral home decided to take them out anyway. Um, my niece says that does not happen. They just burn up. They don't explode. They don't melt. With cremation, ashes is simply bone fragments. Everything else incinerates. Clothes, the container they're in, your dad's hat. Sorry. Mm. No, don't Skin, be sorry. You wanted it that Organs, way. even the implants. The uh, only thing they take out are pacemakers because they will implode because of the battery. The hat what about burn? metal like I have, like a cage and screws and rods? Oh, that probably was just there after they, I yeah, don't know. probably she, mixed in with yeah, the ashes. Probably. Mm. They're not going to go in there and. Take that out. Right? I wouldn't think. Do a second surgery. They just Saw, drill. Out, yeah. no, they'll, they'll give those to Jimmy. <laughs> Here you go, son. Oh, uh, uh, Make a little something with these. Though. Yeah, well, I've yeah. got I've got a huge metal rod in my right arm. Are they going to oh, take right, that yeah. out? No, I don't think they Okay. Uh, well, that's interesting. But in this yeah. case, they gave her the implants. And yeah. That's so gross. Uh, my niece said unless someone requests something, they, they don't. And they've never had that request as long as she's been working. She I mean, said I she's wonder, never seen such a thing. I wonder if someone could take the grandma's implants and then replant them in themselves. Uh, I doubt it. Man, I... I boy, Wouldn't that be... Um, hot. <laughs> <laughs> that is, oh, metal does get removed after cremation, like hip replacements, so... Oh, so but I mean, it's in that, the ashes. Yeah, they it's do in some the ashes. Sifting. All right. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, some uh, gold yeah. panning. It's in the ashes. <laughs> gold panning. <laughs> okay. Thank you, my ash. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk about uh, perhaps uh, something that you might want to have in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Valentine's Day gift for you and her or he or whoever you're An intimate. doing uh, involving... Uh, Oh, Some yeah. kind of uh, these are all USB driven now, by the way. Is oh, that yeah. Right? yeah, charge mostly, them up. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah, charge them up. Very few two twenty lines needed. Yeah, you don't need those anymore. Sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> She'll take this seriously. <laughs> you better get grounded. This is going to hurt. Uh, right now, I want to talk about uh, Christy Lee. What? Uh, Christy Lee just moved. I did. Uh, and you have a brand new bed from the Sleep Number folks.
Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, now well, it's got, ordered. It's on its way. It's coming Valentine's you got Day. Your, uh, you got your husband in the house with you now. Yeah, I got to get a bigger bed. New husband, new bed. Mm -hmm. uh, quality sleep, important. And uh, your sleep number, smart bed, has a sleep number setting of what? 35. Which means? I like a softer mattress. Now, Andrew, your husband, he prefers Andrew. 100, like Chick McGee. And I thought, I thought his name was Randy. No, no, it's goes Andy. by Andy, but I'm sorry. He, he likes a fur mattress, so he can set his uh, his side of the bed at 100. The sleep number bed has they, they have perfected adjustable firmness. Either side of the bed has its own setting, and you can change it uh, if you uh, change your mind. And also, the smart bed actually helps you adjust and helps you by telling you maybe which setting you should be using. So listen to that smart bed. By the way, you don't have to believe me. Check out JD Power. They now rank the sleep number bed number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in store. Read all about it at jdpower.com slash awards. Josh you went in store. What is your sleep number? 65. Yeah, because they found out, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Laid on it and they have all those pressure point things, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, right now, you can be smart. I'm the forgotten sleep number now because she got married. I mentioned you. That's 100, funny. Tom, is my sleep number. Well, that's that's fascinating. Uh, uh, now, um, uh, the uh, sleep number President's Day sale is up and running. You can save a staggering 50% on the sleep number limited edition smart bed right now. And to sweeten the pot, some special financing is available for a limited time. So you want to check this out right now. This would be a great Valentine's Day present. Yeah. Once again, it's uh, Sleep Number stores are found at sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Only place you can get that Sleep Number bed. And don't forget the special financing. See the store for the details. That's the Sleep Number bed. I love mine. Coming up, toys not in the attic, but in the bedroom. Ooh. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You're listening to Bob. I always heard that his herb was top shelf. <laughs> I just could not wait to find out for myself. <laughs> Don't knock it till you've tried it. Well, I've tried it, my friend. And I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson in a small Texas town. He fired up a fat boy and he passed him around. <laughs> Last words I spoke before they took me in. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I'll never, never smoke, smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. <laughs> you can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> Hopped on his old bus, the honeysuckle road. The party was Vegas, it was after the show. Alone in the front lounge, just me and him. With one parting puff, Grim Creeper sat in. <laughs> I'll, I'll never, never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river friend but i'll never smoke weed with willie again <laughs> now we're passing the guitar telling good jokes i know one's a coming because i'm smelling smoke <laughs> no i do not partake i just let it pass by with a smile on my face and a great contact high. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. In the fetal position, <laughs> with drool on my chin. <laughs> I messed up and smoked weed with Willie. <laughs> 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 Bob and Tom show. Bob and Tom is Steven Seagal. Steven oh, Seagal. Seagal. <laughs> hey, Steve, Steven, how did you make how did you make your living, Steven? You no, know, I made my living in the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the last 20 years, I've been a cop. Uh-huh. 
I understand Christy Lee is having some second thoughts about moving. Uh, no, she already yeah. moved. A lot of people don't know, but for five of the last 20 years, I've also been a real estate broker. <laughs> really? <laughs> we had no idea. I, didn't I love know. open houses, man. Oh. Someday I show up, yeah. meet uh-huh. the owners, and say, You get out the car! <laughs> you get on the ground! <laughs> yeah, it's crazy what happened. Uh. Steven Seagal! Yeah. You Steven Seagal! Yeah, I get that a lot, man. And then you Steven Seagal! Yeah. Hey, back up, man. I said, You Oh! oh. oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> I made my living in the movies. Uh, uh, I'm an ass yeah. by Steven Seagal. For the last two <laughs> I've been a bitch zapper. Uh, Steven Seagal. Uh, oh, no, man. Wow, those, uh, you have sound uh, effects and everything, huh, Steven? <laughs> Now, Dwight is a very healthy guy, but you were saying that you had a uh, colonic? I had a colonic. It's a water skiing accident that you do on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> this is where they, yeah. they, they fill your uh, lower cavity yeah, with... Why don't you walk me through this? With water. Yeah. Is there an audio component to this uh, as the uh, revealing <laughs> is taking place? <laughs> like nothing I've ever heard. Uh, yeah, they play, uh, they play this. <laughs> there it goes now. You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. The essential morning radio this is bob and tom radio hey welcome back to the bob and tom show and of course uh valentine's day a week away so we're going to be talking uh, love and mm-hmm. and uh, paraphernalia and uh, humping, <laughs> humping. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not sure if paraphernalia is the right word that sounds more like it's accoutrement uh, there you go that's that sounds sexy in french there oh there she is on the big screen i can see her <laughs> It's uh, Sadie Allison, Dr. Sadie Allison, Hi. who Hi. is uh, the proprietress, if that's the word, of uh, TickleKitty.com, <laughs> which is a uh, source for um, Hi. A source for toys, Hi, if you will. Uh, hey, Sadie, good morning. Um, good morning. Great to see you all. Now, we have also brought in Jess Hooker because uh, she did the sort of the pre-interview, if you will, with Sadie. I did yesterday. And uh, you have a... Um, uh, a set of samples of, of I see various things over there, and you're going to help uh, Sadie walk us through what these are. No, Sadie's going to walk you guys through them. I'm going to help you. Oh, okay. Yeah. We need all the help so, we can get, Tom. Sure. You know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, yeah, this is our foreplay. <laughs> okay. Uh, n- now, uh, I don't like the word sexpert, but um, uh, what is your what is your title, uh, uh, Sadie? Actually, <laughs> uh, sexologist would oh. be one. I'm a I have a doctorate in human sexuality. Uh, so yeah, sexologist and okay, sex that, educator. Okay, okay, and uh, and also a dildographer. I can never uh, <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> or dildology. dildologist. I forget which one it is. Uh, so w- where do we start? What have you got over there, Jess? Do you want to uh, tell Sadie what you're gonna you're gonna hand somebody something? I think Sadie has the rundown of where we're gonna start. Okay, go which ahead, Sadie. One? What do you got? All right, all right. Let's start off with the Womanizer Next 3D. The Womanizer Next. Oh, it uh, comes so in a this, little bag. Mm-hmm. Okay, she's handed it to yeah, Christy. Yeah, so this one here. 
It's uh, it's in a like a oh, there it bag. is. Okay, it's very pretty, very nice. It's uh, green color, about the size of a like a turquoise banana. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> um that was the second name they chose, but it's not the one they went with. They this, went with Womanizer. This is an incredibly popular. If there brand. is one, one toy that you would buy. Ladies, I'm telling you, Sadie knows I bought three of these for my girlfriends recently. I That's honestly right. did. They are, you can't live without and, them. And we're, the days of batteries are gone, right, Sadie? Right. It's all uh, That's U- right. USB. Re- USB rechargeable, waterproof, quality medical grade silicone material on the outside. And this particular model is their brand new version that actually has a really cool feature. It has three new depths. So... Christy, if you turn it on with this button here at the bottom. I don't think mine's charged. Then you'll <laughs> just hold. Yeah, should be. Just hold it down for a few seconds, and you'll see the little light turn on. Okay, and Christy, what is the uh, feel? The uh, Is it uh, kind of rubbery looking? I mean, what does it feel like? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's solid, but it's uh, got that nice silicone finish, and it, so it is kind of rubbery on the outside. It's very smooth, very yeah, soft. So- Tom, you need to feel this. And, it, it, and this is for <laughs> yes. um, this is primarily for external use. On his peen. Yes. On uh, his peen. Right. Yes. On no. His peen. This is actually for the ladies' pleasure button. Oh, right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Actually, and it's, it's a. Yesterday, Sadie yeah, had me put is, it on my nose. Yeah. There you go. You <laughs> can put, put it on Tom's nose. So there it's you got. Go. Oh, yeah. You got to get the suction going. So this is the that's this that, is the six- that's that sexy latex smell that I like so much. Take it off, or he's right. gonna sneeze. <laughs> so the reason the reason Christy's, Christy and her friends love this so much because this is the air pleasure technology that actually gives women the big O in less than sixty seconds. Because as you can see, this little tip it goes right against her body where the pleasure button is, and it has a gentle air suction Mm -hmm. that is like no other when i first found out when this company said you know this air pleasure this new technology is gives it to you in less than 60 seconds i said you gotta send me one i gotta try this because that almost sounds unreal but when i tried it wow with all the different settings and the three different escalations and the, the 10 different suction settings it totally gets you there it's, it's like, amazing um, it's like those new blenders uh, they, they've, got, they've got you know they've got puree whip stir very complicated uh well that's no, what, this is a, this what, is a must have that's called the womanizer yes mm-hmm. yeah this is the is womanizer it, next that and mm-hmm. isn't isn't the term womanizer uh, uh, pejorative back in the day, Josh. If you said someone was a womanizer, yeah, it means that it was a man who got around, used women. Mm-hmm. But in this case, uh, it's, it's a, a, it's a, a it's positive. A device. Josh, I'm going to give this to you. Thank okay, you. If you don't have one. You need once one. again. We're speaking to uh, <laughs> we're speaking to Sadie Allison one. from <laughs> from ticklekitty.com, and uh, that is among other things the home of the womanizer. What else is on the uh, uh, the, the bench over there? What are you going, Sadie? What do you want to do next? Um, why don't we why don't we go for the pure pleasure the purple oh okay rabbits. this is um i i'm gonna take this out and i'm gonna let any of you decide if you wanna this is um let josh handle that this is a big one <laughs> there okay, you go. Yeah. <laughs> the last one let josh one. handle that josh yeah. is a good hand josh can handle yeah. that yeah i can take it from here. <laughs> there you go <laughs> looks you. like a curling iron hello oh Jeez. it's a rabbit yeah this one's not messing around <laughs> no. and uh uh, what what's great it's, about it, Sadie? It seems to me is that you can. Uh, well, this hits everything, doesn't it? It's, uh, <laughs> it looks like you can hit a fastball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you see that button? The button in the middle where your thumb is there. Mm-hmm. That turns it on. Right. And now the two buttons on the sides turn on the other features. So why don't you go ahead? And oh boy! Oh, there hit you those go. Buttons. Oh, so so it's like a, a oh, reciprocating God. saw there. Uh, I mean, not. It's <laughs> alive. So the one button controls the shaft of yes. it, if you will. Right. Now, yeah. what's happening is not only down. do you have an up and down motion. Wait with a minute! It, it is going up and down. It's also turning yeah. right to left oh in my. the in the center of the shaft. So you're going to get that's going to work your G spot. Uh, no, they oh, actually. Yes. The, the, and the tip will uh, go in and out as this does massage the uh, Grafenberg spot. Yeah, yes. very yes. good. Now that's going to say that's hello, right. That's, that's so big, it's going to be saying hello to your kidneys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <right now. laughs> Josh, the way you grip that looks like you're familiar. Well, with I wanted it. to use my hand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to feel. Yeah, that's and it's r- got the rotate the rotating beads right here oh, actually gosh. stimulate 
more nerve endings. Isn't that interesting? You know, it looks kind of like, anatomy. if you're trying to imagine this, it <laughs> looks like a, one of those lava lamps. Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> it's kind of, That's right. It has kind of a gooey look. A gooey uh, look. Yeah. Now, does the uh, Grafenberg spot, does that uh, have anything to do with the Grafenberg Zeppelin? Is that uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything at all? Is it the same, uh, the same guy? Or? I think the first woman to put that in said, oh, the humanity. Oh, okay. Now, <laughs> it, doesn't end, it doesn't end there. You see this butterfly-looking thing. It uh, looks like a cobra. Uh, what are the two little prongs there? Well, oh, these that. would stimulate the uh, pleasure button yes. of the woman, uh -huh. while mm -hmm. while the wings of the butterfly sort of uh, 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 stimulate the uh, labia. The vulva. Yeah. Yes, the labia, the vulva. That's right, Josh. Or, you are so good. Or Alexis. Uh, I mean, this really. <laughs> Volvo, Alexis. <laughs> this really. This really works Pusat. everything. Uh -huh. I mean. You're not going to miss, you, you can't, it'd be hard to miss a spot. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be hard really. to get it out. That is, uh, that is, that epitomizes busy. Yeah. Yeah, would you like to hear it? It's very, very busy. Okay. Yeah, that's buzzy. Uh, now, what's, 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 what's yeah. the purple, what's the purple one called? It's going at it. Uh, That's it, called the Pure Pleasure Self-Thrusting Rabbit. Barney edition? <laughs> Self-Thrusting. Self it, it should be called the Home Wrecker because... <laughs> it's it's I'm really amazing. You. It's water. It's waterproof. It covers all your different pleasure spots. Oh. It's... And what's fun is there's so much variety to it. The toys today are so advanced. They're so high-tech. It's really fun to actually even pick them out with your partner. If you go online and, and kind of look at products together, sometimes that's a great idea for Valentine's, just doing a date online looking at sex toys. Yes. A lot of people and like it, to it's, do that. It's hard to get the scale, so when you see it in Josh's hand, it gives you some idea. Well, I mean, it's a two-hander. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then some. Again, I, and I, I love the fact that it's got the Louisville Slugger logo yeah. uh, right there. Uh, our guest is Sadie Allison, the proprietress of TickleKitty.com. Now, to pull away for just a moment, it's my understanding that, Sadie, you are now in the dating world. I am, Tom. Now, that has to be yeah. pressure. Uh, at what point do you tell a uh, suitor what you do for a living? I actually wait several dates. Oh, yeah, um, of course. Be, the, and the reason I do that is because if I were to say something right off the bat, immediately someone thinks, Oh man, I'm going to show her a thing or two that let me at it. And other guys get really intimidated and think, gosh, how, how would I ever be able to please her? <laughs> so I get different kinds of responses and I want people to just get to know me before they make any kind of judgments. If I bring on you know, what I do for a living. Very smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know when I tell people I, what I do for a living, like, Oh, tell me something funny. Uh, th that kind of thing. Right. I can only imagine, oh, well, why don't you show me a little? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that. Yeah, it'd be funny if they uh, th they knew more about it than you did. Yeah. Oh, you only, well, got the, oh, you only have the Grafenberg 20,040? I, uh, I got yeah. the new model. Uh, I, would, I would love to meet him. Okay. Uh, now, um, we're once again talking <laughs> with uh, uh, Sadie Allison. Uh, now I'm being handed something else. What have you got over there? What is this one? The Sphinx. The, the what is Sphinx? It? How about that? No. Now, okay, uh, this one's fun. And now, I assume does this involve the sphinx stir? Well, <laughs> <laughs> good guess. <laughs> you take a tour of and it. Is it does it? The, I the guess, sphinx uh, is a pair is a pair of luxury nipple clamps that are app controlled. <laughs> app controlled, Tom. <laughs> oh, and wow. it's and it's a very beautiful necklace. Oh. Hey, Josh, if you could put this on, there's a little hook okay. here on the necklace part. Okay. So you can go ahead and, and put that on. So it's a sure. vibrating necklace. Oh. Oh, I see. I'll okay. Put it on so too. Um, once again, uh, <laughs> this is uh, a uh, uh, a vibrating necklace with actual Here, nipple clamps. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's right. You don't have to put the nipple clamps on if you don't want to. Oh, you. and then. Oh. You, uh, oh. The necklace oh, goes around his neck, and uh, then the nipple clamps are go free yeah. to uh, clamp. Yeah. But is, is, when you say, is, is, does someone else control this with their iPhone? Is that what's going on here? It's a <laughs> Bluetooth. That's that's right. Oh, it's, that's it's right. right. Well, There's it's, the app right there. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I someone's never... got it on. The, okay, so 
the chick's got it on the phone. So you can control the vibration from anywhere in the world. Anywhere with your partner, world. whether oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I've Great never... for long distance relationships or in the bedroom across the room. You can do it from anywhere because you have the app and it's app control. Wow. Hey, it's raining here in Saigon, Josh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> do, you have the, do you have the necklace on hooked up to your nipples? I have honestly never engaged in any sort of nipple play. Okay. Um, so uh, can you put one on? Because yeah. there's there's so many different controls. One of them is just a tapping control that I believe <laughs> someone's going to do. Oh, and so oh, yeah. control. Is it on? <laughs> All right, I'm I'm putting them on, but uh, and they they they, they, they kind of look like little whales. Yeah, yeah. as you can like a little, oh, little mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I'm, pu- I'm I'm trying to get my nipple hard so that it'll fix. It's it's shy it under your shirt. Do you have? Do you have shy nipples? I am under the shirt. Ah, what are you doing? Wait, d- d- hold off for a second. Let me get these. Uh, I didn't do that. It was okay. Jess. Yeah, what did you press, Jess? Uh-huh. No, not yet. I uh, shouldn't be doing it yet. It is. It is. It is? Yeah. Does it hurt? <laughs> okay, now. Oh, this is really something. Oh, it's playing. It's oh. really something, huh? I All think right. it's on auto. Let All me right. get the second one on. <laughs> You have two nipples? I, now, He's where's, freak, where's the plan for the third? Oh. Okay, all right. My, they are okay. on my nipples. Now, does it do, do, are they stereo, or does it, Ooh. does each one do its own oh, thing? Oh, I see. Now it's playing. Oh, and we can adjust the intensity. Oh. Of okay, how, yeah. How it, so what I'm getting now is like a pulse. It's zap, zap. Nothing's happening right now. But they are pinching my nipple. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, it, I don't think this is for me. But <laughs> is it a vibration, vibration, or a, yeah. sh- or a shock? It's a, it's a vibration, but it's sort of shocking. And they, they, uh, it's going faster now. Oh, oh, oh we like that. Huh? I'm getting oh. very fast. I, I can already tell this isn't really for me, but I can see how some people would just love this. Mm-hmm. So I've gone to the club right. setting, the club vibe setting. Do you want to tell them about that? The club vibe. Oh, sure. So the club vibe is a setting where it responds and vibrates to ambient sound or your voice. So, Chick, if you wanted to <laughs> talk dirty to Josh in, into the app. <laughs> Let's try that. Hey, Josh, how are you doing? Over Whoa, there? it's responding? Yes. Oh, every time I speak, you're uh, going to get a buzz on your nipple. I can feel that and... <laughs> nipple, nipple, nipple. Uh, I have completed. No. Oh. And, and so did I. That is the... Um, that's, I got to take them off. That's the Sphinx <laughs> vibrating nipple. We have time for one more uh, demonstration. Can we so. talk about this thing? Because we all have one. Well, I, don't, I don't know what that is. What is it? I don't know. It I'm looks a, like a... Uh, it's it the looks, biggest, it looks uh, like a, looks sleeve, like a sleeve of three stick. golf balls. It looks like a deodorant stick yep. to me. Um, go yeah. ahead and open. Go ahead and twist it and open it up, and there's a surprise inside. Oh, Ooh. all right. <clears throat> and, and this is called the ghost stroker for men because I didn't want to leave anybody out of my Valentine's uh, Day kit, the Cupid's Coming kit. Uh-huh. So this it, is it, actually. It, it looks like a, a deodorant stick. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. but when you take it like off that. of the, it tastes funny. <laughs> <laughs> And if you if you see here, it's actually reversible, so you have two different sensations, and it's basically a four-play stroker for the guys. Oh, okay. And it's super, super stretchy, goes over his member. Oh, yes. it doesn't All go over right. my head. But, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't Howie Mandel it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you put, you put some lube inside, maybe some of my Go Love CBD lube, and you put a little bit on him, uh-huh. and as you you could probably imagine how right. it works from there, but it's a one size fits all, huh. and it's really fun because it's not intimidating. It's not one of the bigger types of strokers that I've showed you guys before. This one is really <laughs> playful. I like the very compact. I like Uh-oh. the I like the sort, of, can, uh, sort of aquamarine blue. I can show you guys how to apply uh, or put it on. I had a banana in here. So, oh okay. Uh, I got oh, there oh. Banana. oh there he is. You yeah. can see. Yeah, it's very yeah. It oh. stretches, that's for sure. Thank yes. God. Remind me not to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me not to eat that uh, banana, Tom. Okay. All right. All right, now Pat, go ahead and shove that up your ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Sadie. Sadie is the proprietress. Of hey, the- I got it on my nose. Look at that. Well, that's nice. Oh, my gosh. How, how funny is that, huh? Uh, Come on. It is funny. That's pretty funny. Oh, God. Uh, i got to get a picture And now with sports, sure Dick do. Nostril. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> uh, it's uh, ticklekitty.com and uh, the womanizer, the uh, the the very elaborate uh, multi-talented self-thrusting rabbit 
<laughs> the Sphinx vibrating nipple jewelry necklace and the ghost <laughs> the ghost stroker. Yeah. She uh, has a Sadie has a package <laughs> that yeah. she is selling right now. Go ahead, Sadie. Yeah, for Valentine's Day every year, I put together a special kit and I cherry pick every item. It's called the Cupid's Coming Kit, uh -huh. double entendre, and it's twenty four percent off. And it's um, and I'm doing free priority shipping, so everyone will have it in times for Valentine's Day. Oh, oh nice. by, by the way, the word of cherry picking loosely used. <laughs> yeah, and uh, not, not feel to free to follow me on. A, <laughs> not to imply. Uh, and if you cherry picking. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Sadie. Once again, it's ticklekitty.com. Uh, and it's uh oh um, and follow me on instagram okay. if you guys would like um at dr sadie allison and tickle kitty and go love wonderful right. are you are you on the traditional dating sites by the way i am i'm on a few and yeah, it's with, very with, interesting with your real they're name? all very different with your real um name. not no not my real name Okay, so they have to. Okay, there, there, there we go. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll be. Uh, yeah, because you'd be able to look me up and then find out what I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, good luck with it. Let <laughs> yes. us know how it goes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Okay. I will. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on, and of happy course. Valentine's Day, everyone. You too. You too. Happy happy Valentine's Day. Day. Thank you. Uh, now, um, where are hey, we? Hey, I hit my thumb with a hammer. Huh? <laughs> well, that's funny. Uh, that's that good. Funny. Yeah. It's already uh, swollen. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what has a blue thumb and likes hinge? <laughs> <laughs> this guy! <laughs> we're Anybody? Gonna come, we're going to come right yeah. back. Um, we got Willie G in Vegas up next. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me, is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Okay. Hey, Peter. Hey, Bob. <laughs> what are you doing out here? <laughs> Same thing you're doing. Got a light? From another office, <laughs> she's a smoker just like me. <laughs> now we're dating and we're smoking, <laughs> we're smoking in front of the building. We are smoking <laughs> in front of the building, and we smell like we've been camping. It could be raining, it could be snowing. 
but we're smoking in front of the building. was a smoker <laughs> until I looked outside. They were smoking while I was working. <laughs> so now I'm smoking in front of the building. We are smoking in front of the building and the ashtrays are overflowing. We are smoking instead of working. We are smoking in front of the building We are smoking in front of the building We are standing, we are talking But mostly we are smoking We are smoking in front of the building Smoking in front of the building become a little baby, go back into the womb, spend your last nine months floating. Uh, you finish off as a gleam in somebody's eye. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bravo. 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 That's perfect. Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Uh -huh. Bill Bauer is our guest. <laughs> Wild Bill Bauer. The thing is, with my family, there's always something going on. I've got, a, I've got an aunt... She is the family failure. I mean, it, everything she touches, it just it just goes wrong. Finally, at the age of 87, she had to declare bankruptcy. Oh. Now she can't buy a house until she's 94. <laughs> <laughs> that she, poor soul. <laughs> she, she is a victim. She's a victim. Absolutely. She's at home last week, knocking on the door, vacuum cleaner salesman. I got a dandy of a vacuum to show you, ma'am. Oh, I can't afford it. I don't have any money at all. Just let me show you what it can do. He forces his way into her place, reaches behind his back, pulls out a sack of horse manure, dumps it on the floor and goes, whatever this vacuum doesn't pick up, I'll eat. She goes, well, I hope you got a hell of an appetite because they turned off my electricity this morning. <laughs> Dave Cooperman is here with us. How are you? How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm good. Good. Dave, a young guy, young comedian, good-looking guy, a uh, married man, I understand. I am. How's I that am. going? Right now, we're I guess we're working on having kids and stuff. And, cool. But we're having some trouble, you know, and she's blaming me because she's not getting <laughs> pregnant. And I'm like, honey, you realize we actually have to have sex, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Screwing with my head will not make you pregnant. How many times? <laughs> <I> gotta... <laughs> so we're thinking about, you know, we're talking about kids. Even that, even naming a kid is a challenge if we have one, you know. I want my kids to know he's both Jewish and Chinese. The best I've come up with so far is cha-ching. <laughs> 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 Maybe lump sum. <laughs> Bob and Tom. 24-7. Oh, yeah. Just look forward to having him in the studio. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Uh, that's right. We're all uh, just can't wait until it'll be Sunday, 6.30 Eastern before you know it. And you know what that means, Tom. Viva that's right. It's the Super Bowl. Viva. 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 There's our fresh-faced Willie. And Willie is in yeah. Vegas. He looks uh, even more hey, awake today. He, he yeah. looks more awake today than he did the other day. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Hey, hey, Willie, how's it going? Thank you, guys. I'm feeling good, man. Went to the hallway, went to the vending machine, got my morning soda. I'm firing <laughs> up, man. Nice. All right. Very nice. Okay. Um, we've had some bizarre stuff out of Vegas already. Some idiot asked Purdy if he thought he looked like Lee Oswald. <laughs> Just like this is this is why they're they're limiting access because people are asking dumb questions. Is the Taylor Swift thing is that like a big deal now? Are they still talking about that in Vegas? Yeah, man, people are talking about it. Everybody seems really upset about it. I don't mind it. 
I think it's kind of fun. My girlfriend loves Taylor Swift. She tells me the stories, like what her songs, what celebrity exes they're about. She'll be like, oh, yeah, this song's about when Jake Gyllenhaal broke up with her at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. This song's about John Mayer. This song's about she went to a party in Malibu and she got stood up by young Sheldon. And I really like the lore. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys have seen this. The betting sites are kind of uh, one. The betting site I use, they're offering in their app for the Super Bowl. They have a special called For the Swifties, and they're offering bets based on Taylor Swift songs. There's 22 is a good Swift song. That's 22 points in any quarter. And this isn't something that I did. This is being offered. Uh, mine. Her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, getting eight, 87 yards. Uh, her song, Karma, there's a bet called Karma. That's the 49ers win and no Kelsey touchdown. Oh. That's bet 10, and it pays 310. Whoa. Uh, I think that's the, the most fun bet. This one's the best fun name. It's You Belong with Rashi instead of You Belong with Me. <laughs> And that's a Kelsey or a Rashi Rice touchdown in the first half. Oh, yeah. Rashi, I like that one a lot. Rashi Rice, wide receiver for the Chiefs. Yeah. yeah. Those last two are pretty good bets, don't yeah, you right? think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, it, they're, they're good payoffs, but the odds of Travis Kelsey not catching a touchdown, I, I don't think – I think he's going to catch a touchdown is the point. I think. One yeah. would think. One would assume. Yeah. This yeah. is why they well, – I would say if betting. he doesn't – Yeah. But if he doesn't catch a touchdown, I think it's more likely that they will lose. If they're able to yeah. shut him down, then the Niners are going to win. Exactly. Yeah. Now, have you decided your overall pick yet? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with KC. It just, I grew up a Colts fan, and I just watched the Patriots win and beat us in every AFC championship or beat us in the playoffs. Or, I'm just, this is the new Patriots. I'm getting used to it. I'm fine with the new order. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And I, I'm just surprised with the, where the line is. But you were telling me the line is really not based on the logic of who's going to win, but based on betting. It stimulates uh, what, what the public, general public, will bet on. And most people are, to, are taking the Kansas City Chiefs plus the points. Ergo, if you want to be a sharp, if you will, a uh, sharper square, a square would be a normal, everyday guy, a stupid guy. But a sharp is a bookmaker, and he would take... San Francisco minus the two. You see how that works. Yeah. No. But I've learned, I learned something with Belichick and Brady. You don't bet against Belichick and Brady. You don't bet against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes until, if you had, you would have bet the Bills like me last, a uh, couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and they showed me. So I can't come off Kansas City now. So okay, there you now go. Willie, what's on the agenda in Vegas today? Um, not too much. I got to be careful. I didn't bring a comb, and I ran out of hair product. Yesterday, an Elvis impersonator told me to stay off his turf. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those that missed your broadcast yesterday, can you hold your uh, your fingertip, uh, the the two fingertips up to the camera? Uh, once oh, again, these things? yeah, yeah. Hold them way, oh, way yeah. close. Oh, yeah. Now, explain Check what's going out. on with your painted pinkies. I call these my Diet Coke pinkies. I think they're fun. It's, uh, I just have KC on one side. I have 49ers on the other side. We came out here, not a lot of prep. I said, what would my hero do? A great man from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Machine Gun Kelly. So I got my nails painted. <laughs> and people, honestly, people really haven't been noticing. I thought it would be a much bigger issue, but it's oh, been well. great. Oh, have you guys seen this, by the way? That's, uh, that's the stadium right there. Oh, cool. Oh, that's very cool. It is right behind you, isn't wow, it? Wow, yeah. Yeah, check it out. There's me. Wow. There it is oh. again. There, <laughs> there it is again. Yeah, there. Okay, very, very, very good. Uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll ha have fun on the streets of Vegas. Uh, send more video we so we can see what's, see what's going on there as you get ready for the 57th Super Bowl. Is 58? that correct? 58? 58? This is 58? 58. Wow, and you've seen all of them? Uh, I've seen every one of them. As man yeah. and boy. I, I um, don't remember them all, but I, I was there. I know it was. Okay. Now, Willie, uh, you go out there and you uh, get yourself a whore for Uncle Chick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's what me and Noah are doing. We're walking around expensing things. The rule is if we take a picture with, for the internet, yeah. I can expense it. So cigar, picture. Okay. Uh, beer. <laughs> Picture. picture. Maybe I'll find a lady. We'll take a picture. Picture. Uh, okay. Darn right. All right I do want to say Super Bowl 58, 5 plus 8 is Taylor Swift's favorite number, 13. Ooh. So, gang, I'm playing 13 on roulette all day because this week I'm not a gambling degenerate. We're all just Swifties. You guys. All right. Okay. That's Thank right. you very much. Thank you, Willie. Great stuff. Darn right. Cheers. Uh, good job, Willie. Those are some good bets. I'm good starting to like some of, those, uh, some of those prop bets. Uh, coming up. Um, we've got sexy time with Allie Breen. 
Uh, Christy, we can squeeze a quick story in here. What have we missed? Uh, let's see. Federal officials are responding to an alarming viral video of a Tesla driver wearing an Apple Vision Pro headset while behind the wheel. Hmm. The video captured from a passing vehicle shows a man in a Tesla Cybertruck with a headset over his eyes and his hands off the wheel, apparently controlling the virtual display. Now, when you look through one of those, can you see straight ahead? Is that... I haven't been in one. I don't know. I have not. I mean, with the with the headset. I don't your, know. Whatever How it is, works. Over your eyes. Wow. Uh, according to the TV commercial, you can. It just looks like there's um, your app screen. It just looks like it's floating in front of you, and you can you can actually see past the app screen, and you're just looking into the world. It, there, there. I don't think there's anything in there as far as virtual reality goes, unless you choose that. I saw I a guy on, right. on uh, the news. He was wearing that at an NBA game, standing up courtside. Okay, so what would be the point of wearing them while you're driving? U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete. Oh, there he is, right there on our big screen. Oh, Buttigieg yeah. says uh, he shared the video on Twitter and wrote, "Reminder: All advanced driver assistance systems available today require the human driver to be in control and fully engaged in the driving task." at all times. Wow. In the Vision Pro user guide, Apple specifically states, quote, never use the device while operating a moving vehicle, bicycle, heavy machinery, or any other situations requiring attention to safety. Okay, so theoretically, this guy could be watching a porn movie. Theoretically. And uh, have uh, his car on whatever it is, auto drive. Yeah. Um, yikes. That doesn't sound like a good idea. No. But if you've got a cyber truck. From Tesla and the Apple Vision Pro, you're obviously single. <laughs> uh, obviously. <laughs> In fact, that goes without saying. Uh, have you seen the Cybertruck? Yes, I have. Is that the one where the window broke mm -hmm. accidentally, right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it, they're they're out there now. I don't uh, No, I haven't seen one they're, in the wild. No, they're, absolutely they're, not. They're bigger than I thought they'd be. Have you seen one in hmm. person, Christy? No, I haven't seen one in yeah, person. Yeah, they're, they're, they're out there. Hmm. Yeah. Very unusual look. I bet you that you it'd be uh, hard to come by to get a test drive one of those. You would think, right? I think you'd probably get it done. But uh, they, it's a very unusual looking vehicle. I'll, yeah, I'll give you it that. looks very Mad Max ish, or yeah. you know, like one of those future movies. Yeah. And I think it comes with a free vasectomy. I think if you get it before mm. the final four, uh, <laughs> just check local dealers. Looks like an aluminum wedge. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah wedge? It, it, exactly. It's yeah. very odd looking. Mm -hmm. Um, but it may be the future. Who knows? Yep. Uh, when we come back, we have um, more robot news. And uh, Category 6 hurricane? Huh? Uh, yeah, it may be boy. in the offing. We'll find out. I thought out. it just went to five. Yeah, uh, we're going to find out. Uh -oh. uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening. To Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. A Swedish sexual rights group unilaterally proclaimed a new English term for what it considers one of the most misunderstood parts of the female anatomy. Oh, who's, yeah. who's this group? I'm sorry. A Swedish sexual rights group. Okay. They want to change the name of the hymen to the vaginal cor uh, corona. The vaginal corona? C O R O N A. So does that mean it's still Isn't there? Isn't that corona? If there's a lime in it. <laughs> what? C O R O N A. Corona, right? What is uh, Corona. Isn't that already taken? Uh, vaginal, vaginal corona? corona? No, no, isn't corona already used in anatomy? Well, uh, not vaginal corona. Not vaginally. You can add the names. Um, but vaginal corona. Was, who was upset about the word hymen? The group hoped the new term would displace the traditional Swedish word for hymen, which is too long and too weird for me to pronounce, uh, which translates literally as virginity membrane and led to misconceptions about female sexuality. Oh, the, uh, you pronounce that the fenortner.
The Van Ortner? The Van Ortner. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, actually, I think it's, it's the plug and vagin. The Van Ortner. The, 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 the plug and vagin. The plug and vagin. Come on. Know with the See corona? why I sat on this story uh, for two hours? Come on I'm now. Worried about I'm it's classic, like Yankees. You're not going to get rid of that. But it was. So this is just the Swedish. <laughs> they don't want to change the English term. They just want to go. This no, is just for well, the Swedish language. So I yes, see. the Swedish, uh, the Swedish, are changing. because of the so, guilt associated with. So it would be if as it if it breaks before you actually right. have what? sex. So it, yeah, in case you what's have the loose the corona translation? Corona has then? burst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh really? And what how, mean, could, how could that? Have I'm, I'm I'm confused. So and what's the new what's the new Swedish that? word? Vaginal corona. But that's English. I don't know what the Swedish word is. They're the ones changing it. I know, but it's hard to pronounce. I guess. Durkin, Durkin. <laughs> don't the Swedes uh, with Tiger, don't they have enough trouble right now? No, Shouldn't they yeah. just be quiet about stuff for a little while? Yeah, but you know, it's sex, sex, sex over there. <clears throat> it is, isn't it? Well, yeah. They but... are way ahead of us sexually. I can't yeah. argue with that. Well, I can't wait to see the commercials. Yeah. If you get a Corona, they got the one right now where the limes are being... They, they're, they're playing... Uh, uh, the oh, finger flip football. Fi- finger flip football yeah. with limes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can imagine the other if all one of a sudden there's a hymen a, involved in that. The guy's skipping rocks, and then he skips his uh, phone. Do you see the one where the woman and the man are sitting there in the lounge chairs looking out at the ocean, and the girl walks by, yeah. and the guy spends a little bit too much time looking at her? Yeah. And, and she, she squeezes him. the line. He, he waits way too long to react. He jumps late. It's because they're acting. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a bad job. And, he, and the, the actor <laughs> just a is, bad job. used to have a big squirted in his face. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. And the, the last thing that actor's interested uh, in is a woman walking by in a bikini. That's probably That's bad. where the acting is. Yeah. Let me get that phone call. Bob and Tom show. I met a stony biker. Hey, Donnie. Oh, hi, Donnie. I think I've solved this puzzle while they're changing Hama to Coronas. Yeah. yeah. Well, because everybody knows in fourth grade, you know, English class, you learn about hymens. I mean, certain words are hominated. Super bow, <laughs> low pitch, doghouse, no, but work it's, it's it's hyphen. It's all hominated. Punt, pass, and kick, all of them. Punt, okay, pass, and yeah. kick. Okay, those are hyphens. <laughs> hyphens. <laughs> okay, we'll find out more about uh, Vaginal corona. Hy- hymen talk. We'll come back. I'm very confused when we return. The no. Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. The minivan hearse thing. Have you seen this? No. Was that for dead soccer moms? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. The funeral homes that have the minivans that they... That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. That? The minivans well, that home. they've put those, you know, the fancy scroll work thing they put oh, on the sides. Oh, God. Yes, I'm not making this up. And they're like the big town and country vans. Well, I didn't want to die before, but now I really don't want to die. <laughs> it's really God, disturbing. I just had this discussion yesterday with one of my You're sons. You're going to be dead, honey. You won't know. I know, but the whole minivan thing. I The bumper stickers on that will be horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. My orphan child is an honor student. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Uh done, This is Jimmy Pardo. You are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Can I say something about driving on the highway, first of all? Sure, yeah. People got to focus. It's scary out there. Amen. Mm -hmm. I was on the highway. A guy next to me is texting while he's driving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look at this son of a... And then I hit a car. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wow, it's dangerous. I think he won that round. Uh (laughs) Game, set, match, yeah. Accident next to me, LOL. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) OMG. Uh You text and drive. WTF. No, I see it all the time. I can barely see the I've letters yeah. anyway. I, I drove by a la- I told you this. I drove by a lady with a book open on her steering wheel. Reading. And eating a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Wait a minute. You know what? Mm, oh my pizza. pizza. <laughs> Jim McHugh is our guest, recently married. Uh, we've established virtually nothing else about you. You're tall. Um, I'm tall. I know you were, you were very successful in the, the, the recent uh, Boston comedy competition. Are you from Boston? Is that the... uh, You know, I'm a transplant. I'm from Connecticut. Because mm-hmm. uh, so you, really... you don't have a discernible Yeah, Boston I don't talk like a retard. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's like wicked smart. Wicked smart. Well, What's hey, well? you don't sound like you're from around here. Nice way to embrace the community. <laughs> guys don't sound really smart around here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, 
It's, it's, always, it's really sexy with the women, too, you know? Which one of you retards is going to buy me a beer? <laughs> and the announcer for the Super Friends, dead on, too, by the way. I don't know who that guy was. Yeah, he, he was the guy who was after Ted Knight. Ted Knight did the original ones. He'd, right. He'd be like, Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie and Sarah Monroe get ready. <laughs> Go, Aquaman, I want you on the golf course in five minutes. Chop, chop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Superman, you're going to free bowl of soup with that hat or what? <laughs> Talk to the judge. <laughs> Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life, and I work the state fair. Calm. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hello, Pat. There's uh, Jessica Alsman. Hi. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Is that to finish this conversation with Josh? About no. what? The, the answer is no. What? What were you talking about? Oh, Josh wants to take his womanizer from Sadie Allison. He was going to charge it at the airport. Mm. I just don't think it's appropriate to have it. Uh, people got their iPhones sitting there on the table with I mean, the charger. It's classy and... looking. I don't think people know what it is. <laughs> uh, you, you've got this. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you just suppose the average person would know what that was? No. I, Why don't you just hold it up and keep answering it? Hello? <laughs> yeah, every now and again I'll... Yeah. Hello? It looks yeah. like kind of a blue... F Blue lamp. Uh, curved lamp. Phone. lamp. Exotic. Mm -hmm. Remember the, uh, I think it was called the Sculptura home phone. It was a circle. And you oh, yeah. pick it up, and it was a very futuristic. Oh, thing. I remember those. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you have one? Uh, yeah. Looked absolutely. like a big donut kind That's of thing. Yeah. A big round donut. It was real stupid. Yeah. yeah I think, remember, there were, wasn't there a, the, a tennis shoe phone for a while? Wasn't sure. A, mm -hmm. big deal. Oh, Sports Illustrated would give you one. Yeah. You got yeah. It. yeah. yeah. Now, look, now they're both gone. Yeah. <laughs> Land, landlines and Sports Illustrated. There were NFL helmet phones. I still have mine. You get a cheeseburger phone. Those were always kind of fun. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 I still have my Alf phone. You have an Alf phone. Whoa. What is it? Is it Alf? It's Alf and is he hold, holding the phone? No, it's in his lap. Oh, oh wow. Oh, well, it's like his penis. Yeah, okay. you grab, <laughs> grab uh, Alf's dork and make sorry. a call. There you go. Sorry, oh. I'm sorry I brought it up. Oh, there was Alf's that penis. phone. Remember that phone that would just sit down and it came up like this and it looked like a... A wiener? It kind of. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like a. That's what they call it. I got. I, I got the boss on the blower. It was what? <laughs> um, <laughs> enough. We have to move on enough. with the world of news with Christy Lee. What have you got over there? Uh, Gen Z has a message for us. If you carry a wallet, you're old. According to Amazon Web Services, nearly 80% of Gen Z consumers use digital wallets, with 50% trusting their phones with their money. Driver's licenses and medical cards. Oh, no. Yeah, but, but Gen Z's judging me. Oh. What will I ever do? <laughs> no, Not I, all state al states allow digital IDs either. So Yeah, I didn't think they would. How only, can that work? Uh, a handful of states you can have your driver's license on your phone, and yeah. that's yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah, as of October 2023, the following states Ooh. have active mobile driver's licenses give, Arizona. Give them to me, yeah. Arizona. Colorado. Uh -huh. Delaware. Georgia. Florida, Iowa, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, Missouri, and Utah. It's mm, like huh? I'm off to Iowa, people. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so th what they're saying is, and I always get these confused, Gen Z is like uh, under 30, and the millennials are like between 30 and 40. Is that I think right? you're born like 2000 and after. Your I Gen have Z. no idea. Okay, um, but the larger point here is, the wallet makes you old. Uh huh. Um, isn't the fact that you have a wallet indicating that you have responsibilities? You have money yeah. to put yeah. in it. Well, no. no, you have. You know, I'll remember that Gen Zers next time I go to tip you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to look old and pull the money out of my wallet. Well, oh, someone's crabby. <laughs> I think these whippersnappers out there. Are <laughs> Sending our world to hell in a hand. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> what if you lose your phone? My gosh. Well, then that would be a problem. Yeah. Right? If your license is in there, no. I don't know why I switched back. I did have uh, a, a pocket in my phone case, and mm -hmm. you had your credit card and your license and uh, another significant card, and that's oh. all, you, all you'd need. Because you never go anywhere without your... Without your phone. So there you go. You, you lose your wallet every now and then. Yeah, right? but you lose your phone, you lose it all. Yeah. And hey, Josh, you'd lose that condom. 
Um, yeah, where do they put their condoms? I have a I penis. Use, no, I use exclusively <laughs> digital condoms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you <laughs> wearing one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just, I just, button on my Huey, just wave it over your... <laughs> That's your right. Hoo-ha. Are you still having conventional orgasms instead of virtual orgasms? Ah. Is that right? Oh. Caveman. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm down to a... Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down to a little teeny, super thin... Condom? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, well, not little teeny. It's the it's the monster, but the monster, uh, the monster. The this is a very thin, slender wall. That's nice. It's your basics, right? You Got a couple of credit it? cards and a driver's license. Oh. Yeah. And then I have photographs, photographs of the other memory. things I need you know, on my phone. So if I need a medical card or whatever. Oh right, right. And yeah. sometimes that works. Not all places that does that work. Then you've got to go bring the actual card in but uh, so it makes you another trip and yeah i just carry a wallet yeah, well <laughs> you, then you're you're old christy that's what it says well, you, I got, you care. what about a purse Are you have to have to carry a purse that, how old is that jesus yeah you can't use a digital tampon no it doesn't work no it although doesn't. they all use like the diva cup now so yeah. never mind whatever Ugh. i doubt I, th no. they, they don't all use the diva no. cup no some of them do i'm sure <laughs> yeah. like, we gotta save the environment so you'll have it so i've been having a purse a very very convenient you otherwise i like having a Purse. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd have to prison pocket everything. Yeah, that's what we do. You just I got a nail clipper. Give me a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got any tweezers? <laughs> you Are you high. okay, ma'am? <laughs> yeah, hang on a second. I'm just hey. getting my wallet. <laughs> a new study out there reveals robots who speak in a local accent may seem more a competent and trustworthy to humans. A competent? Competent. <laughs> Scientists ask German residents to watch videos of social robots speaking in a male human voice in either standard German or the Berlin dialect. Sprechen G Deutsch. <laughs> Researchers found people were more comfortable with the Berlin dialect considered the robots more trustworthy because they sounded like their peers. Yeah, how many people are comfortable with German robots? <laughs> yeah. Let's ask that. Yeah, I'm cutting the wires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Hiltz, night uh, in the cooler. <laughs> Adolf over there, I think, is going to invade Poland. Uh, that makes sense. So that they of want. Of course, the, it makes sense. You want a more human, relatable. I have, my, yeah. uh, I have Siri set on a British accent. You guys know that about female me. or male? Uh, female. Oh, that's cool. Hello, Charles. Charles. <laughs> Charles. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. I'm in love with my, my Siri. <laughs> I have yeah. mine. Uh, mine sounds like Teddy Kennedy. Oh. Uh, hello, Tom. Uh, uh, what can I uh, do uh, for you? Tom, I cannot. I get to the phone. You know uh, what, Tom? Uh, ask not what uh, I can do for you. Ask uh, what you uh, can... Uh, leave uh, a message at the sound of... <laughs> of the gurgling water. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Oh, thank you, Pat. Better, 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 ending than I, better ending than the one I just thought of. Uh, wow. Uh, <clears throat> climate scientists are proposing a new designation to rate the power of hurricanes. This would be a Category 6. For more than 50 years, the National Hurricane Center has used the Saffir-Simpson wind scale to communicate the risk of property damage, which offers the designations up to a Category 5, Saffir. indicating... Saffir-Simpson, those guys are hacks. Yeah, they are hacks, and it's about time that they're, yes. uh, they're recognized as such. <laughs> It's O.J. Simpson and Billy Saffer. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> no. Indicating wind speeds of 158 miles per hour or greater. Climate scientists have now proposed a hypothetical Category 6, which would encompass storms with wind speeds greater than 192 Ask me if I'd rather speak to a climate scientist or set myself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, would you rather speak to a climate scientist or set yourself on fire? I'm going to go with <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Right, so someone being told that a category five, would, how many miles an hour is that? 158 greater. And it, but they've got to get it up to 190 before. Well, I ain't leaving the trailer until it hits 190. Mm. That's what I say. I can kiss my ass. Yeah. I've been here through 57 and 92 <laughs> and 1,005. That is a very folksy thing oh, yeah. to refer to storms as the year that they occur. I've been here for all of them. You remember 88. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that Damnedest was thing, the donkey was in the air for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Came back down. Plop. Scared, scared the poop out of him. Well. <laughs> so, Remember he didn't go to the bathroom for six weeks. Remember that? I think that scale, first, as I've said, and I know you guys don't believe me, but there was a scientific study that when hurricanes were given uh, soft-sounding names or less threatening names, people wouldn't evacuate. Right. I, I we believed you. We didn't that. care. 
That's the... I'm just saying, you name the hurricane, you know, <laughs> Hurricane Genghis Khan, people are going to get their asses out of the way. Hurricane Pol Pot, I'm moving. I'm getting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> hurricane Hitler, I'm moving to a different country. Mm-hmm. Well, but that's just, that's one hurricane. And Hurricane Hitler's over. So you got to you, you get a, a, a badass names for the next one. Oh, my God. Hurricane Stalin, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Hurricane Stalin. Oh, I feel sorry for people who don't know their history. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. Not, well, they're not going to know whether to leave or stay. They're forced to relive it. So that's, <laughs> that's their loss. Wait a minute. Let me look at this. Stalin really bad? Which is the bad one? I forget. Um, I'm surprised they don't do like a... I mean, for example, the earthquake scale is really confusing. Yeah. Do you really know that if someone tells you what it is on the... The higher on, the on number, the, I know yeah, it's bad. Richter scale, but <laughs> yeah. isn't it kind of... Isn't there some logarithmic weirdness to it or something? I, I don't know. Like a two is significantly... A two I, is yeah. twice as bad as one instead of I, just I, one more. I forget yeah. how it works. But I mean, yeah. the hurricane, so they, they currently only go to five. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. That seems to be enough to me. Yeah. If it's category five, this is like this is kind of reminds me of the scene in what's the movie? A spinal Tap. <laughs> you know on. what I'm saying? Yeah, the eleven. Mm-hmm. I turn it up to eleven. <laughs> it's a bad hurricane. Turn it up to, to six. six. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be worse. Yes. I mean, you gotta. I mean, higher winds. That isn't enough to scare people. You gotta add stuff. Like what? Monsters. Oh, I tell you what, Hurricane Six, uh, uh, flying sharks. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sharknado's are a thing. Tornado. Yeah, watch out! They're 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 coming after you. Iron Zero. There have been He's three uh, actual documented Sharknados. Is that right? Three. <laughs> That's right. All within the last year. I'll be damned. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, right now, um, coming up, we've got uh, sexy time with Allie Breen. But right now, I want to talk about what a great 2024 it's been. One month in, it's going great. But maybe you're saying to yourself, you know, uh, I'm having a Groundhog Day moment in my food life. It seems like I'm eating the same thing every day. I'm going to the same restaurants every day. I'm getting a little tired of it. How about uh, shaking it up a little bit? That's where HelloFresh comes in. What a great idea. HelloFresh does the grocery shopping for you. They have the recipe all lined up, and they've measured everything. You just put it together. In some cases, spend just a few minutes putting it together, pop it in the oven. You've got a delicious restaurant-quality meal. Now, HelloFresh has a, a great new thing going on right now called Free Breakfast for Life while you keep your subscription active. They'll put a breakfast in each box that you got. What have you got over there, Chris? Oh, this is perfect for the upcoming big game. Gouda Vibes Burgers with tomato, onion, jam, and potato wedges. It takes 10 minutes to prep, 30 minutes to cook, six easy steps. And boy, wouldn't that look great mm. on game day. Mm, uh-huh. mm, Thank mm. you, HelloFresh. Uh, HelloFresh, they've got uh, more than 40 recipes to choose from each week. And once again, you're going to save a ton of time because you're not going to have to go to the grocery store. And um, uh, they tell you how to do it. They've even got pictures. So you're going to become a much better cook. And um, they've taken a lot of the hassle out of it for you. And, of course, huge variety, more than 40 recipes every week, from uh, vegan over that way all the way over this way to good old-fashioned comfort food. They've got low-calorie, low-carb, everything you can choose from. And check it out at HelloFresh. They want you to try it out, so they've made this great offer, that free breakfast for life while you keep that uh, subscription active. Check it out, HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. That's HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Coming up, we're going to help people with their love lives. Uh-huh. That's right. That's what we do here. Uh, it's something we call Sexy Time. With Allie Breen, this is the Bob and Tom Show. You don't say we didn't want. I always heard that his herb was top shelf. <laughs> I just could not wait to find out for myself. <laughs> Don't knock it till you've tried it. Well, I've tried it, my friend. And I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson in a small Texas town. He fired up a fat boy and he passed him around. <laughs> the last words I spoke before they tucked me in. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. I hopped on his old bus, the honeysuckle road. The party was Vegas, it was after the show. Alone in the front lounge, just me and him. 
one parting puff, Grim Creeper sat in. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. My party's all over before it began. You can pour me some old whiskey river, my friend. But I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. Now we're passing the guitar, telling good jokes. I know one's a coming cause I'm smelling smoke. <laughs> no, I do not partake. I just let it pass by. With a smile on my face and a great contact high. <laughs> I'll never smoke weed. Will it? some old whiskey river my friend but i'll never smoke weed with willie again in the fetal position <laughs> with drool on my chin <laughs> i messed up and smoked weed with willie again. <laughs> Hey, Bob and Tom Show USA, <laughs> Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Larry King. Wow. Larry, Larry. Larry. <laughs> nice to see you. Let me sit down here. Oh, Ouch, no. my back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're giving off a weird vibe when the Walmart greeter tells you to pound sand up your butt. <laughs> Hey, what's with Cher and the sunny thing all of a sudden? Would somebody tell you, tell me, anything? Uh, anybody else now think the C word was invented because of her? <laughs> Cher, of course. Of course, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. And how about that Carol Channing thing, huh? Yeah. I guess she was singing Hello, Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dildo. Yeah, oh, man. Hello. <laughs> just a good only got stuff. married. Only got it twice in her twice life. in forty one years, years of marriage. Of marriage. Wow. wow, she needs Viagra. And I said it before, but never, never address an Indian in war paint as Chief Big Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Just don't do don't it. Do and it. finally, I gotta say, I gotta say, kids, <laughs> uh -huh. it's been a stone gas being here, by the way. Uh -huh. I gotta say, this body piercing craze is getting out of control. You know, studs through the tongue, sure. rings through the nose, right. eyebrows, the nipples, the belly button, and now a series of interlocking rings and hoops through my schwantz. <laughs> oh, did I say my schwantz? <laughs> oh, somebody stop me. You know how <laughs> you know how embarrassing it is to go through the metal detector? <laughs> I'm sure. Larry King, you've got a solid nickels worth, kids. Thanks. I'm out. Peace out. <laughs> Peace out, Larry. i got to catch a plane. Uh, thanks very bye much, bye. Larry. <laughs>
Tom? We're just helping. Your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are... Are we really? Okay. There she is. It's uh, the lovely Allie Breen, comedian. Yeah, we're saving relationships. That's we're not right. Uh, and uh, Allie, where are you? I'm down at Fox. I'm doing some writing and work for them today on some shows. Oh, all right. Okay. So you're yeah. like in the coffee room or something? Pretty much, exactly. I'm in basically like a conference closet type thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's just get right to it. We're going to help people with their love troubles here in the Bob and Tom program. What have you got? Dear Allie, I've been dating a guy for six months. His mom was just in town and no invite to meet her. There's a restaurant I knew they'd be going to, so I basically went there with a friend at the same time and Ugh. pretended to run into them. <laughs> I and he pretended introduced to me as into them, a Josh. friend. <laughs> uh. Got the friend introduction. We got into a fight, but I'm mad that he called me his friend, and he's mad that I stalked them and won't even address the friend thing. What should I do? Wow. Uh, do this guy a favor and uh, leave him alone for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He might have been saving you the hassle of dealing with his mom. Maybe she was super critical. So as opposed to... Or maybe he's just yeah. not that into you and he doesn't want your mom to meet you. I was trying to be a little bit more optimistic. <laughs> I, 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 to, eat the mom, to meet the mom. That's such a strange... I think she, strange she made the wrong move, either. though. That's Yeah. Yeah, that's not a cool move. No, no, of course not. Very stalkish. You yeah. don't do that. They're yeah. they're doomed. Break up. Are you familiar with the term <laughs> familiarity breeds contempt? <laughs> <laughs> you might want to take a look at that one. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm not sure how to get out of it, but uh, yeah, I don't see a, a You might move on from it eventually. Yeah. You know what? I bet the mom would have peer pressured him to get married right away, and so he didn't want to mess with no. it, too. There's parents out there that No, that. maybe she'd be very judgmental. Well, yeah. you can do better than that. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Strumpet. Round After heels. six months? Round I heels. I don't think I'd want to meet a mom. Strumpet. After six months. Yeah, Isn't this lady's a wife. Is that too soon, or is that... Yeah, I think that's not... Too soon. She's... Uh, yeah. Ma'am, ma you're really not... We've already discussed you way too much. Okay, <laughs> well, let's, let's move You're on. Simply to our, not worth our time. Move on to our next letter. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> We're very important. Dear people. Allie, <laughs> I got into a fight with my boy, with my husband. Sorry, and actually moved out of our house for almost a month. I was drinking the night that I left, and I used to be pretty wild. And I had the idea to drive directly to his friend's house, and I ended up sleeping with him. Oh. I stayed there for three days. <laughs> then. I went to stay with my sister for the rest of the time. Now you say, ma'am, ma'am, you say you used to be wild. <laughs> now, <laughs> what would you have done back in the old days? Oh, sorry. I can only imagine. Um, okay, so then I, I went to stay with my sister. My husband finally called, then sent flowers, and has been begging for me to come back. I just decided to move back in. I swore to his friend that we should never tell. He promised to do the same. Um, but now he keeps sending me inappropriate texts, and I'm getting nervous. What do I do? Oh, oh wait. Well, yikes. You're a terrible person. No, hold on. We need to know the context really, of why really they were awful. fighting to begin with that she left. No, we don't. Maybe oh, he don't. was a horrible person, and oh. she was just, you know, a little uh, revenge sex. So I don't know, but I, the, the issue is, is wow. as you move forward here, you've got the uh, the best friend fellow texting you yeah this is not going to end well no. yeah yeah this is no. rough. Mm. yeah <laughs> I, I, I mean do you think the best friend will tell if she doesn't sleep with him again or you think no not just as long as to she, get her drunk and sleep with him not as long as she gives him ten thousand dollars every month <laughs> <laughs> that's the way that's the way josh and i'd write it for the hallmark movie turned bad <laughs> yeah that hallmark movie quickly became a lifetime movie. <laughs> yeah right uh, yeah. Hallmark from hell. Uh. He's going to tell wow. the friend anyway. The next time they're drunk or something, or if he gets mad at his friend, I know he's going to let it slip. Just to be like, oh, yeah? yeah. Well, I banged your wife. Hmm. And it's oh. over. Yeah, that's, that may be accurate. Yeah, this is a, there's a big, this is going to be a problem in the future. Next time, sleep with a stranger. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah, uh, not so, his friend. Rock so, solid. Rock solid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to our we next actually letter. Solved one. <laughs> Allie. Dear Allie, my wife and I have been married for 19 years. The last time we tried to have sex was on Christmas Eve of 2022. Oh my God. Uh, shall, I say, shall I say I had a failure to launch? Hmm. Since then, she's had zero interest, and every time I try to initiate, she simply says, Well, I guess we can't. 
uh, is one thing related to the other? Oh, well, well, yeah. I would think <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. May, it may not have started that way, but she's certainly compounding the issue uh, with that yeah. kind of attitude. Sure. That's so mean. What was the, what did the, what were the exact words she used? Well, I guess, uh, we, what were they? I guess we can't. I guess we can't. Oh, Mr. Okay. Softy. Oh, I see. I'm flying. You okay. can. Yeah. Good yeah, Lord. Mr. Yeah. I say weenie wink. Do the towel trick. <laughs> he can't. What's that? He can't. He Tom. can't do the towel trick. You're He's rubbing got it in a his softie. face too. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. You mean it's softy all the time? Yes, that's the problem. Well, but she's you, not helping. You need to go to you need to go to a, a qualified to a medical professional and to get, talk him get through. Get the little blue pill. Come Maybe on. you have a. a pl are they blue? Mm -hmm. all, it's not all, just all physical. Not all of them, but though this is now being. <laughs> Again, compounded by her, by her. Yeah, that's yeah. Whatever letter is next, can can you pl can it please reestablish my belief that there are good women out there? No, the, th the three we've had so far just awful. There are good women out there. Too. Well, I'm just they seem to be in the minority now. <laughs> okay, well, let's get to our next letter, Allie. What do we? What's redeemable? Dear Allie, I met a girl online who I really like who acts very shy and demure. Uh, it took a month before we actually had sex, which I didn't mind at all. But when we did, I found out that she had a tramp stamp. Seems odd, right? I don't mind if she's not actually so shy. I just mind if she's lying about it. Am I being crazy and overreacting? Yes. Yes, yes you yes. are. Uh, now we got, got dumb, it on a now we got dumb guy. Break. Yes. yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think Christy's got the answer to this one. Yes. Uh, Where did the tramp stamp come from? And probably a drunk spring break trip. All the girls got them at mm -hmm. one particular point in time, and now they're stuck yeah. with them. It kind of depends what it is. If it's like a Roman numeral, you go, why do you have a 17 on there? Oh, that's the number of times I've, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Why does it keep getting crossed out and raised? Yeah. You mean butt stuff, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you're overreacting. Yeah, it, it could be, like Christy said, just a drunken yeah, spring break. Not all tramp stamps are sexual. Yeah, right. My, just, gra my grandfather's was very handsome looking. It was very nice. He had a nice World War II plane on his back. Yeah. <laughs> now, is, didn't we have a news story saying that the tramp stamp has kind of gone out of style? Yes. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, a trend. Yeah, it has. See, yep. trends come and go. That's why you don't put them forever on your body. Yeah. Remember the barbed wire Well, now the trend one? is to oh, yeah. tattoo everywhere. Yeah, people yeah. have full sleeves now, though. They don't yeah. have trends. Well, the barbed wire thing, that's, that's still around. I know, because people got it when it, Pam Anderson did it, when it was a trend. Yeah, and that's now, very Jersey Shore. Pam Anderson's so cool. Esque. The coolest. <laughs> <laughs> She's not wearing makeup She's now. She's so cool. Let's, uh, let's, let's move forward here, Allie. What else do we have in the realm of romance? Dear Allie, my husband and I got married 18 years ago. He's older, and he said he'd take care of me completely if we got married and I'd never have to work again. <laughs> we have a son who's about to go to college, and now he says he's going to retire. And since we have so many expenses, maybe I should get a job while he actually can, can spend his time at home. I'm curious, but my friends are telling me uh, I've been taking care of for so long that it's not crazy, and I should probably agree. What should I do? Get a job. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they reasonable. had an agreement. I, yeah. I, wouldn't right. you want to get out of the house, too, if he's home more? All the time? That's like what I would think, too. Yeah. Doesn't well, yeah. Did, did you see the girls chime in on that one? <laughs> yeah. uh, how do you feel now, Josh? Oh, my God. The three, get, uh, the, if he's going to be in the house, we got to get out the hell out of here. <laughs> the three witches. Oh, yeah. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Yeah. Boil and trouble. <laughs> I'm in love with him as long as he's not around me. <laughs> he's paying my hard. bills. He's worked hard. Let him rest. Let How him can relax. I miss you if Chill. you won't leave? Yeah. That's, there's, <laughs> I, I think the guy might the like kid. it. Yeah. Make the kid pay for college. That's right. Really, I'm still going to stay home and you go get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Seems reasonable. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't right. know. I don't have any answers for that one. All right. Okay. Well, let's move on then. Uh, Josh has nothing for you. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Dear Allie, my boyfriend's dog is always trying to join in our sex. Not just watch, but actually join in. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. Uh, What's thinks, the problem? Thinks, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to have hot sex or not? <laughs> he seems to think it's funny, but it's taking all the romance out of everything. Okay, first the of all, stop, is... stop. It is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. okay. It is. Let's not lose sight of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's taking the romance out of all of it. 
he actually lives in a studio. So the only option is to lock the dog in the bathroom. And then the dog literally just barks like crazy, which doesn't help. Oh, what man. should I do? Get a crate. Yeah. Well, we need more information. Yeah. So is the dog see. hot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like long lashes. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Like, a, like an Afghan hound, you know, something with <laughs> mm-hmm. flowing locks. You could do a variation of that famous scene in... Um, that, that famous scene in Last Tango in Paris where Brando's trimming his nails. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you get to the guy's go. house. He's what, why are you filing down the doggy's nails? I guess we oh, should. You got any butter? Oh. You see any scratches? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Don't hear about that more often. Oh, I guess, <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming... Did she say anything about how they why they can't go to her place or... Oh, no. That's a change of venue has got to happen. <laughs> Can you wait yeah. to feed the yeah. dog and, like, give the dog a bunch of, like, food in the bathroom and then you know, knock one out? Oh. So, so then and, he's distracted? Any dog's going to eat it all right. in two minutes. Yeah. Put it in a puzzle yeah. game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, let it work a puzzle. Guys can knock it out in they, two have puzzle, too. they have puzzle food dishes. <laughs> no, no, I meant yeah. like a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that sconch or thing? Whatever it is, you can put peanut butter in. Oh, the Kong toy. ball. Or, yeah. Kong ball. Yeah. Freeze it. Yeah, Freeze might, a Kong ball, put them in that's the bathroom. Actually a pretty that's not good a bad idea. idea. Yeah. yeah. That might keep the dog yeah. occupied for a while. Hmm. Or just a big bone, exactly. Something that would be. Uh, well, speaking of big bone. I mean, <laughs> that's what he's trying to get One that's not attached to a body. I got a big bone for each of you. Oh, or bring a girl dog. I wonder if she's worried what's happening when uh, she's not home. Josh, the dog wants to join in. I mean, man. Come on. (laughs) Let me get some of that, huh? (laughs) Bark, bark, bark. Let's go. Come on. I'm putting the peanut butter there for a reason there, babe. Hello. (laughs) You guys are assuming it's a a guy dog. It could be a girl dog. Oh, hey. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Oh, kinky. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, got to have an open mind here. Didn't Jerry Springer used to interview a guy that was married to a golden retriever or something? Really? Wasn't it a black lab, I think? Was it a... Yeah. Or maybe they married... Married to a horse. Well, once you go black lab. (laughs) Wow. You never go back lab. Okay. I'm sorry. Let's go. We have one more letter, Allie. What do you got? Uh, and, and if that was if the one that we there's a devil's threesome, I wonder what you call the threesome with the dog. Oh. That's got to be an interesting. Oh. Well, all right, dear Allie. My uh, menage. Uh, wait a minute, Josh. Mm, yeah, we menage, can figure this out. Uh, um, uh, no, that wouldn't be. It. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Doggy style. Okay, what's a good dog name that starts with a T? Fido. No, that's an F. Mm, that's an F. Uh, okay, we'll work on that. Oh. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Allie. someone's got to come up with that. Yeah, in the comments, let us know. Dear Allie, my boyfriend always tells me I'm very spoiled and I always get my way. Meanwhile, I'm the one who usually treats him to dinner when we go out. I cook, I clean, and he just occasionally rubs my feet. I love him, but he acts like he's treating me like a princess, and that's just not the case. <laughs> Do you think he really feels this way, or is he gaslighting me? Uh, he's not. Ga- there's no gaslighting going on here, but I... I um... Hmm. He, yeah, he probably thinks he is spoiling you in a way. He's like, what do you want from me? I did something. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. What, what is he putting into it? I for three seconds. Foot, the occasional foot massage. Yeah. That's does it? He, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Or does he, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Please start calling him princess all the time. Like, don't worry, princess. I'll take care of dinner. I'll clean princess. And he will get so mad, and it'll be amazing. And yeah. he'll never call you a princess again. He'll figure it out. <laughs> And then you guys can break up, and you'll oh, be geez. happy. <laughs> you know, osman has been in a relationship longer than any of us. Did you guys know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there's logic to this. Hmm. Man. She's right, though, I think about that. That is so annoying. I would get annoyed by that. Yeah, just and because he's like, you're so it. spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, uh, that's our, our episode of, uh, <laughs> of, of that concludes this you episode like Mr. Of, 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 of Sexy Time. I think we were helpful. Super duper. There, there are a couple. Are you doing something <laughs> special for Valentine's Day? No, nothing. Oh. Nothing at all. Yeah. Do you have Never a present? Valentine's Day, really. It's kind of an annoying holiday. Do you have a present for your man? Uh, nope, not that either. Maybe I'll think of something. Wait a minute, but, what are we talking yeah. about? Our next episode will be on Valentine's Day. Yeah, it will. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, well. Somebody well, will break well. up on Valentine's Day because of us. Yes. If that ain't love, I'll kiss your ass. <laughs> the Valentine's Day edition. Well, thanks, Allie. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye, Allie. Bye. Bye. Um, hey, speaking of Valentine's Day, are you kidding me? Well, we got the answer for you right now. Steven Singer Jewelers. Christy Lee on that wrist has that beautiful 
bracelet. Oh, yes. Tell me what that is exactly. This is called the At Last bracelet. At last, we have a beautiful, beautiful gift for you to give your sweetie baguette diamonds, round diamonds on a vintage uh, chain. Looks so wonderful. But the price point is just magnificent. $248. Even has a little safety latch so you won't lose it. She won't lose it. Just a gorgeous piece of jewelry. Now, uh, Stephen Singer also, of course, has those roses. They're not just any roses. They're dipped in 24-karat gold. The big one this month is the Malibu Pink Rose. There's one right there. Christy's suggestion, Josh of course, it. is uh, give them the Malibu Pink Rose and drape a bracelet over it. Oh, that would be yeah. perfect. I say the rose and maybe some uh, nice diamond earrings in the mashed potatoes. And we'll <laughs> look at the look on her face when she thinks she's breaking a crown. Uh, no, um, uh, put, the, put the diamond earrings with the peas. Make it a great presentation. The roses, Steven Singer's got them. Uh, they come in a beautiful gift box with a uh, beautiful personalized Valentine's Day card. So uh, one trip to IHateStevenSinger.com, and uh, this is happening for you. Once again, there are, of course, uh, bracelets, bracelets and earrings and gold-dipped roses. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going with this. Uh, check out the Malibu pink one online, IHateStevenSinger.com. Beware of copycats. Get the real thing only from Steven Singer Jewelers. IHateStevenSinger.com. About uh, 59 bucks for one of these gold-dipped roses and lots of other stuff, including that beautiful uh, that beautiful uh, bracelet that Christy Lee has yeah, on right I love now. It. I love I really do love this. Once again, you'll find it. I wear it, it all the time. IHateStevenSinger.com. When we come back, it's history time. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening. We're putting our per diem on the roulette table. If we win, I'm getting my nails done at the nice spa on the resort. But if we lose, I'm finding the cheapest manicure you can find off the strip. I'm feeling real lucky. Here we are at Nails by Night. It's convenient, I have to get my nails done. Afterwards, I'm gonna get a little weed pipe, and after that, I'm gonna buy Italian clothing. Did you get the ticket? Price? No tickets, no, we can't, get, we can't afford to go to the game. We can just hang out before it. I'm sick of Taylor Swift and the feminization of football. That's why I got this double pinky paint job, quite masculine and perfect for any NFL fan. Italian clothing. It's loose enough around the arms so you can talk like a this. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. She climbed up on a bus, <laughs> said that I'll do just about anything that you want me to. <laughs> I got tickets to your show from the radio. They were free. <laughs> I said, you got the wrong bus. She said, I know who you are. You're that rockabilly country singing superstar. And I thought that you might like to have a little bit of company. Uh -huh. I said maybe 20 years ago in a different place in a darker room. 
with a prettier face. <laughs> but there's just way too many fish in a sea, and getting caught with a whale would be the end of me. <laughs> Don't cry, this can't be the first time you've been dissed. Oh, no. Brunettes and blondes and red-headed girls And they'll be dropping by soon Rocking my world Turn around and go You ain't on my list See, only the best-looking tuna Gets to be star kid Another 12 years. <laughs> Till the next one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Baby Jessica. <laughs> Hi, this is Carl Lewis, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. This is for the people going through heartbreak right now, and you don't know what to do about it. Okay. Get sick, turn my stomach, throw up, up, chuck, pray to the porcelain god. Barf, belch, bail out, blow chunks, lose lunch, vomit, feed the fish, and heave a log. <laughs> Evacuate, all you ate, retch, rop, regurgitate, drop your cookies, puke, and spew. Pearl, purge are just a few words that come up when I think about you. <laughs> <laughs> quality material. Oh, that is beautiful. Distinguished actor and comedian, he is John Witherspoon. My 11 year old, you know, he's going to private school. Only reason to go to private school is my mother in law helps pay half. Little rich kids go there. I see mm-hmm. one baby all the time. Oh, yeah? I see one baby there. He's and Annette Benny. And my son talks like this Father, Father. <laughs> 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 Would you like a toddy? Father, where we, my friends are going to Spain for the summer. Where are we going? I said, Compton. Or somewhere going. <laughs> Compton. Back to Detroit. Uh, Back to yeah. Detroit. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Uh-huh. I'm going to give you that two left boots with a high, one of them with a high heel. Yeah, that's right. Nick Griffin's our yeah. guest. I, well, I'm, I'm glad that it. Uh... I'm glad everything's okay yeah. now. Yeah. Now, are you dating at all? Do you see anyone? Are you? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I mean, I, I try, you know, they're doing that internet dating, which... Uh, have you tried that? I have tried it, yeah. But but it, I just don't, I don't see a future in it because there's no story if you do get married with your kids. You know, I was checking the box score and then I double clicked on your mom's head. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Top Show. You know what time it is. Who knows what time it is? That's right. It's time for our history lesson. No, 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 no. So I'm sorry because we have got to intrude with. Yeah. Ace Cosby. Here he is with his joke of the day. What did the baby seal with the broken arm say to that killer great white shark? I don't know. What did he say? Don't consume if seal is broken. Well, See, the all, seal had a broken arm. Yeah. So, uh, that, was, oh. that was very good. Thank you very much, Ace. Um, got Man. a letter here. Got it before wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the joke of the day is sponsored by Sleep Number. Save 50% during the President's Day sale on a limited edition smart bed only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. Thank you, Ace. Well, thank you very much. Uh, real quick, uh, I just noticed this. What? Pat Godwin. And Jeff Oskey, Saturday night, Evansville, Indiana. 
They're going to be uh, at uh, a, a great spot, a legendary comedy show every year, Pat Coslett's Simplicity Furniture. It's a great gig, and uh, you can see the boys just Saturday night, right? Oh, yeah, just okay. Saturday. Okay. Fun right. time. Time now for our history lesson. Thank you. Time now for our history lesson. Here's Tom with what's today, Tom? February 7th. Very good. Looking at that right now. Got good job, buddy. Birthdays good for job. starters. All right. John Deere. Born on this date in 1804. Wow. He's famous, still, still running. Yeah. yeah. Famously, his wife <laughs> dumped him. Oh, yeah. Sent, oh. Him, a, sent him a Dear John Deere letter. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's him. So, uh, Charles Dickens, born on this date in 1812. Oh, he's a writer. <laughs> he originated you, the phrase, that little Dickens. <laughs> I, uh, Insider. Is there anything uh, other than... Uh, <laughs> Dickensian? Is there any other writer that has... Um, Faulknerian. Fal is yeah. it? Are you sure? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, uh, Steve Kingian? Yeah, yeah. Kingian. Kingian. Uh, Emo Phillips, friend of the show. Um, Happy birthday. Oh, no, it's John. my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's good. I'll have cake and ice cream. You know what I'd like to do is go out in someone's parking lot and look around. <laughs> Emo Phillips was also the worst phase of the band Wilson Phillips. Oh, yeah. And, uh, A lot of mascara. Oh, oh God. Yeah. There was Country Phillips. There yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, right. uh, 1960, the birthday of James Spader. Oh, I like Terrific oh, actor. Blacklist? Hated by female dogs. <laughs> they would fear him. Uh, friend of the show, Robert Smigel, born on that date also. He's the voice of... Uh, Triumph? Uh, Triumph, the insult it's comic dog. Love that. Good birthday cake to poop on. <laughs> uh, Garth Brooks, born on uh, this date in 1962. Birth name... Chris Gaines. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Well, that's yeah, No, yeah. it's not. Uh, Matthew Stafford on this date in 1988. Matty went to Georgia. Yes, he did. Uh, nice guy. Married to his high school sweetheart, right? Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, he had a, uh, there was a, a video of him going out to play this past season. And I think he has three little girls, two or three little girls, and they all said, "Try not to get tackled, Daddy." No, oh. uh, it was just a, just oh. adorable, is what it was. 1914, Charlie Chaplin debuts "The Little Tramp" mm. in Kid Auto Races in Venice. Um, Originally a female, uh, a female comedian. That's right, "The Little Tramp." <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> they probably couldn't call him a tramp anymore. Well, sure they could. It's a guy. It doesn't matter. The uh, unhoused, <laughs> vertically challenged uh, little fella. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, on this date in 1940, Pinocchio was released, the Walt Disney version of Pinocchio. Always creeped me out. Yeah, me too. Weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to build me a child. Okay. Or where they get drunk and turn into donkeys. Mm, that's scary. They, they yeah. start smoking cigars. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, that scared me as a kid. Yeah, I just I turned into know. an ass. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, the big thing uh, on this date, Pat, do you know what the big Beatles news is on this day? Oh, it could be anything. Be rooftop seven. concert, somebody's birthday. 64. I'll give you that much of a hint. Uh, Ed Sullivan. Nope. Not yet. That's when they, the famous thing where they landed at JFK. And they're, you know, ha ha waving from the That's today? stairway. This, uh, on this date, that would have been hmm. 60 years ago. Was that the first time they were in the States? Uh, for most of them. Harrison had actually been here before on his oh. own doing something. But, oh. right, that, that was the Beatles. And then they were on Sullivan three, like the next, what, three oh. weeks? <laughs> Okay, sorry, John. No, Harrison owned a. Uh, I'm sorry, the, you, Harrison owned a bagel shop in the Bronx. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, yeah he was well, here for a while. Yeah. Yeah. What I'd give for the leg room that Planes had back in '64. Uh. Uh, let's see now. Um, Mel, oh, this is one of my favorites. Mel Brooks' "Blazing Saddles" is released. Laugh free. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I'm getting made today. Yeah, I'm just saying. You want to see this movie before it's completely canceled and unavailable anywhere. Um, Favorite line from that movie? <laughs> hey, boys, look what I got here. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's so many. Uh, uh, I particularly like the end where he they break into the sound stage. Very I, funny. I still that uh, cheap that out, and they didn't know what to do, man. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, they went. They just lost their minds. To hell yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 Put a cap on it. That's what they did. Well, speaking of that, uh, mm -hmm. it's time now to reveal what we learned in today's show. It's time to put a cap on it. All right. Uh, we open the show with Captain Dildo. Uh, because we talked with uh, Dr. Sadie uh, Allison today. Because uh, 
Valentine's Day is a week away. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Is everybody all squared away with Valentine's Day? Uh-huh. Everybody? Really? What was that? I'm trying to remember the names of the things. There was the Womanizer. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was uh, that's the one you say you you actually bought three of those for friends, Chris. I actually did. Wow! And then there was the one that looked like a uh, some kind of complicated. It looked like one of those things you put on your steering wheel to keep your car from being stolen. The club, the club. It did. It sure did. Yeah, but it, it was sure it was some kind of dildonic uh, device of some it sort. Did everything. And then you had vibrating nipple uh, nipple clamps. Yeah. You could control control from anywhere in the world. Yes. Wow. I may have sported them and Chick may have controlled them for That's a moment right. there. And now Josh and I are going to be married. We're going to set up <laughs> housekeeping yes. over on the east side. And that was the that was called the Sphinx, right? Is it Sphinx? Sphinx? Yeah, not the Leon Sphinx or whatever. Okay, the Sphinx. Sphinx. Yeah. The Leon Sphinx is missing a tooth. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think his friends called him the Spankster. <laughs> Once. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Is Leon still with us? Maybe not. Um, I think he is. Yeah, both of them are. Okay. okay. Uh, physically, I'm sure his body's still alive, yeah. Uh, Christy Lee's going to a neighborhood Super Bowl party this weekend, but she's not taking anything. You're thinking rude? No, no, she's traveling that day. And yeah, she I won't get there till That's late. A- Probably half time. Her self-centered boyfriend had the oh my gosh. Uh, idiotic idea to Romantic. take her somewhere for Valentine's Day. And he's my Day. husband now, and, remember? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. oh, well. oh, I'm sorry. Leon is no longer with us. Leon speaks? Yeah. Why are you sorry about it? Yeah, yeah, he seemed like do? a fun guy. <laughs> Had some dental work done toward the end. <laughs> uh, and this week's Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. The hell. Las Vegas. <laughs> Oh, and uh, look for some video from Willie G and no other ensconced in some hotel in Vegas right now getting ready for the big game. Uh, and this is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us? Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at bobandtom.com. This is...